full season of Arkansas high school football comes to a close tonight. It's the final football game of the year at War Memorial Stadium, and it's the 3A state championship between the Osceola Seminoles and the Harding Academy Wildcats. We welcome you back inside our broadcast booth at War Memorial. My name is Scott Inman, along with me, R.J. Hawk, set for this big game between Harding Academy and Osceola. We have had a common storyline, R.J., all throughout these championship games. It seems like it's been the story of a team that's been here, and in Osceola's case, it's a team that fell a little short last year in the championship game. They lost the 3A championship to Boonville, and Harding Academy, once a perennial power, was here all the time. Hasn't been that long of a drought. They were here in 2015, but they finally made it back. Yeah, and you, you look at this Harding Academy team, and really Neil Evans in his fourth season has really resurrected Harding Academy. 2014, 2015, this was a dominant Harding Academy team. I, I remember that they had multiple MVPs that are still talked about to this day. In fact, um, the quarterback that was playing for Harding Academy at the time, he's now at Harding University as an offensive coordinator. So really there's a lot of tradition for the Wildcats, but for Osceola, Scott, this is a team that's got a bad taste in their mouth after last year. They played a Boonville team that was a much better team in the 3A state championship game, a Boonville team that shut out Osceola and won 35 to nothing last year. And so for Osceola, this is a return trip, but this means more. When you talk to Coach Hooks uh, on Monday, he said from day one of the offseason, this year, he said they had it plastered all over the locker room of uh, that 35 to nothing loss that they faced last year against Boonville, and said, "You know what? We're gonna we're gonna keep playing. Remember, uh, or we are the champions." Yeah. Every single day, and he said his kids were getting tired of it, and they said, "Coach, why do you keep playing this? We are the champions." He said, "Because I'm tired. I want you to be tired of hearing the other team celebrating our state championship." Well, it's a tale of two quarterbacks in today's game. There's no question everything revolves through them. Let's start with Osceola's MJ Vance. Yeah, he's really the do-it-all athlete. This is a guy for Vance that has thrown for almost 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns, but he's also run for over 1,000 yards this year and 24 touchdowns. The offense runs through Vance. If, if the offense does not do well tonight, it's because Vance is not playing very well. And so you're going to see a lot of work done at the quarterback position for Osceola. For Harding Academy, it's about Caden Sight. He's a 73% thrower, 56 touchdowns, five picks. He's also carried for 507 yards and run for eight touchdowns. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast crew, Eric Sullivan. Eric. All right, Scott, great to be back with you guys for the final high school football game of the season, and it couldn't come at a better uh, time and place here at War Memorial. We're right at 48 degrees, so not bad at all. Zero win tonight, so the passing game shouldn't have a problem at all. Now, you're looking at the Hardy Academy fans here. Uh, this is becoming a second home for the town of Searcy as the Lions were able to get that state championship last week in a big, big win over Benton. The Wildcats hoping for the same thing, and uh, you guys just kind of piggybacked on I think of all all the games this weekend that this quarterback matchup definitely is the most intriguing for me because Sipe is kind of the uh, Danny Warfel style. He's going to chuck it all over the place. And with Vance, you never know what you're going to get. So I can't wait to keep my eyes on both of those guys all night long. And with uh, Harding averaging 50 points a game, OCO averaging 40 points a game, we may be here a long time, fellas. So let's get this one on the road. Harding Academy won the toss. They've deferred their option to the second half. And we're going to take our pregame break and be back to kick this thing off next. You're watching the high school football state championships on AETN Sports. One of the best things about being a community-focused bank like Centennial is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief to Chamber of Commerce and civic activities, we enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. More information available at mileandhunterbank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. The Harding Academy Wildcats about ready to take the field as we are about a minute and a half away from the kick. Osceola will be on offense first, and we talked about the quarterbacks, and certainly it's going to be about them tonight on the offensive side of the football. But there's a couple of safeties on the other side of the football we should talk about as well. First for Harding Academy, there's a sophomore safety, RJ, that 
is doing it all. Yeah, his name is Braden Oliver. 78 tackles on the year. He leads the team, six interceptions. But really the most impressive thing, he's got 11 tackles for loss from the safety position. And yeah. uh, he's only a sophomore. And uh, you look up and you talk about this defense, and we, we said so much about the offense and about how the quarterback play is. This defense runs through him. On the other side of the equation, Osceola also has a senior free safety, Trey Moore, 74 tackles and three interceptions, so he's going to be relied on as well. Yeah, and Trey Moore, uh, it's almost a, it's a, a good comparison. The only difference between really the two players is that Trey Moore is a senior and, and Braden Oliver is a sophomore. Uh, this is Trey Moore's last go around, and uh, you know he's going to want to close this thing out with a big game. There you see Coach Neil Evans walking out of your frame and the Harding Academy Wildcats averaging 50.8 points per game. About ready to take the field. 14-0 on the season, making their 10th state championship appearance. And how about the city of Searcy this year? Last Saturday night it was the Searcy Lions taking home the state championship by a point over Benton and now a second high school has an opportunity to be a state champion out of the city of Searcy. Yeah, and they've had to cancel the, or postpone the parade in Searcy twice now because they didn't know if Harding Academy was going to get in. So now I've, I've gotten confirmation that the Searcy parade will take place on Tuesday night. <laughs> uh, whether or not Harding, Harding Academy will be in it or not, I don't know. But uh, I do know that if you're in Searcy, the, the Christmas parade will be on Tuesday night. And think about this last two weekends, Scott. In Saline County, you had Benton and Bryant in the state championship in two classifications. The city of Searcy has two teams in it. Uh, a lot of good be football being played in the area. Well, I'm glad they're going to get that in before Christmas actually happens. Yes, no, it, it is good. Ben Sloan kicks off for the Wildcats. It's a short kickoff and a good return for Osceola. Brandon Johnson takes it up over the 40-yard line. A good return to start the game, and, and it was a short kick, but it's going to give Osceola a great, great field position to start this uh, this first possession. Five foot ten, 190 pound senior MJ Vance leads his Seminole offense onto the field. He's thrown for almost 1,700 yards. He's run for over a thousand. Everything starts with him. He will keep it on the ground and hand it off to Johnson to start. And he gets across the 40-yard line. It's going to be about a three-yard pickup. And a second down and seven coming up. The stop made by Eli Wallace from the linebacker spot for the Wildcats. You know, Johnson's a guy that has run for 549 yards this year, seven touchdowns. He's a smaller back, 5'8", 150 pounds and a senior. Tell you what, Vance... Looks a little bigger than that 190-pound frame when he stands yeah. out there, but he is a strong guy. Here he comes with the quarterback draw, but he runs into the teeth of the Harding Academy defense, and it's a minimal gain. Coach Hooks told us on Monday, RJ, that Vance has 4'8 speed and he can squat 500 pounds. Well, you can tell his thighs are as big as tree trunks, and the guy, is, he's got a lot of speed, and. And I asked him, I said, if, if he's got to go in with a one-on-one -on -one matchup and, and take on a linebacker, who wins? And he said, I'd take my quarterback any day of the week. So a big third down on this first drive. Not a great snap, but Vance takes it on the run. I think that kind of helped out the effort. It's not a big gain, but I think he's got the first down. Yeah, and – the, the snap was to the right of him that time, but it, it's almost like when you throw to a wide receiver when he's in motion. Yeah. It threw it to the quarterback to the right of him, and it just led him right into the hole. Levi Mercer, a freshman, converges to make the stop, but Osceola gets enough for the first down. Opening drive of the game, 3A state championship came here at War Memorial. There's Coach Robert Hooks. He brought his team here a year ago. Said he did some soul searching, changed the offensive scheme a little bit, more of a tight end look than last year. Vance to throw, gets the throw away, it's up for grabs, a 50-50 ball is incomplete. Intended for Dan Newson. Well, that time Vance had a throw off his back foot, 
felt the first pressure of the ball game by this Harding Academy defense. And so when they had, when he had pressure in his face, he just threw it up there and overthrew, he overthrew his, his wideout just by a little too much, underthrows it a little bit, and it's probably caught, and they're in a great field position. So it's going to bring up a second down and 10. Vance has six 100-yard rushing games this season in 13 outings for Osceola. Plenty of time this time, but now the protection breaks down, and we'll call that a coverage sack. Levi Mercer, the freshman, with the sack off the defensive end spot for Harding Academy. Uh, and you saw right there, Mercer had I mean, he put his whole body into it to bring, in, bring down Vance, and just got him down low and brought him to the ground. And so now, if you're if you're Osceola, you've got a third down and long. You know it's an obvious passing down for the Seminoles. Might say Vance held on to it a little bit long there because nobody was open. He had good protection. It just broke down at the end. And that puts him in a really bad spot here. Third down and 18. Vance on the play fake. Has to step up in the pocket, and down he goes. Back-to-back -back sacks for Harding Academy. This time it's Keaton Chapman. And that time, Scott, Chapman came on that weak side and, and came over and just was able to get the, the, the sack. And it's just great pressure by this Harding Academy team to get in on Vance and not allow him to, to scramble outside the pocket and run. So Jacob O'Kane. We'll be on to punt it away for Osceola. Ty Duggar is the return man for Harding Academy. Big stop for Harding Academy on this opening possession. Boy, that snap skipped up there, and a bullet comes off of the foot of O'Kane, and that's going to take a terrific Osceola roll. Wow, all the way inside the five, and they'll down it inside the one-yard line. That's that a, rolled like a basketball instead of a football. It wasn't your more conventional punt, but it, it did the job. A 61-yard punt Woo. right there that rolls all the way to the one, and now Harding Academy is going to be backed up in the back of their end zone to uh, start their first drive. Hey, hey, fans, catch the football spirit and see what makes Arkansas schools so great with videos from schools around the state. You can do all this at AETN.org backslash sports. Well, you saw that replay. That was a good little shortstop dig there by the punter, too, on the snap. It one hop to him. Caden Sipe now, our first look at the junior quarterback for Harding Academy, and he'll have to start this first possession of the state championship game standing in his own end zone. That's got to make you feel a little tight here to start, but he stands in and fires it out complete to Connor McGahey on the first play from scrimmage. Now that's what Harding Academy's going to do. They average 268.6 yards passing per game. They're a little on the pass-heavy side, 158 rush per game. And when you look at Caden Sipe, he's a big kid, 6'2", 190, 190 pounds. And, you know, when you talk with head coach Neil Evans, he said not only is he a good football player, but he's a good guy. He's, the, he's literally the team leader for this team. Everybody looks up to him. And whistles pre-snap. We're going to get a penalty flag down. Looks like maybe Duggar moved early. Ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, talking about Sipe, he told us that there's not a more beloved or respected young man in the locker room. He told us he takes the footballs and the water coolers in after practice. Yeah, I mean, he he, he is the consummate leader on this team, and and he Coach Evans said that he uh, – you know, you, there's no job that he won't do for this football team. 3,500 yards passing on the season and 507 rushing. Sipe to throw in first and long, or second and long, rather. He escapes the pressure and throws towards the first down yard marker, and it is caught by Ty Duggar. He's the leading receiver. That's his 84th catch of the year. And that's going to be a first down. Well, that, and. That's a, a great job by Duggar to find the sticks, find the marker, and run his route to the marker to pick up the first down. Harding Academy out of the shadow of their own end zone now. Stone Sheffield is the running back, and he'll get the call. 
Not much there. He tried to go behind his blockers, but good penetration by the defensive front for Osceola. Scott, I tell you, if if you have an all-name team, I, I'm going to have my leading candidate with Stone Sheffield yeah. on, that, on that team. We do have an injured player down for Osceola. It's Brandon Johnson, who's a linebacker, but he is also the starting running back for the Seminoles. This is not what you want to see early in the game, if ever. Hey, fans, stay in the know about AETN programs and announcements. All you have to do is text AETN to 313131 for updates, and they'll go straight to your phone. That's AETN.org backslash sports or text AETN to 313131. Well, you always like to see a kid walk off under their own power, but you can see Johnson with a big limp. He's going to miss at least a play. We'll have Eric check in on that situation here in a moment. It's going to be a second down and 10 after the running play went nowhere for Harding Academy. Caden Sipe to throw. Plenty of time. Zips it out, caught at the 25-yard line. There is a... Did we see a flag there? Yeah. Connor McGahee on the catch. He gets out to the 30, but we'll see about the flag. Yeah, the flag's it's against back, the offense. The flag's back at the 16-yard line. It's going to be a hold against Harding Academy. Well, we saw penalties really stack up in the 2A game earlier this afternoon with Fordyce. Holding on the offense, half the distance from the spot of the foul, still second down with Fordyce and Junction City. And now Harding having a hard time playing in front of the sticks because of penalties. The offense is moving the football. So what you're saying is the refs are moving it back? Well, I'm <laughs> saying the, the refs are calling what they see. <laughs> I know, I'm just <laughs> And they're moving themselves back, Harding Academy is. A little substitution here for Osceola's defense. The play call comes in from the sidelines, and the play clock is down under 10 now as they finally get set. Caden Sipe to throw. Over the middle, and that one a dangerous throw that could have been picked off. Intended for Isaac Miller. But Osceola had it covered well. Dennis Davis was up there, and, and he almost came up with an interception for Osceola. And... Uh, I don't think he was expecting to be that close to the football. Third down and 26. We'll see if they throw it to the sticks or they try to get it into a playmaker's hand, then we're going to have another flag. Pre-snap penalty against Harding Academy, it looks like. Prior to the snap, snap infraction, offense, half the distance, still third down. And, and Scott, you know, one of the, one of the things that we've seen uh, with teams that haven't been here in a while or or, or, or teams that have uh, that are new to this, this whole state champion, you got a little jitterbugs working, you know, on that first series that you're in the game. I think that's what you're seeing with all these penalties early on for Harding Academy. Different environment playing in this stadium. And another flag comes down before the snap of the football. I think it's going to be a false start again. This will be the third one on the drive, I believe. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, half the distance, still third down. Wow. Scott, they, they've got to get all the way out to the 33-yard line for a first down. A rocky start, to say the least, for Harding Academy here in the title game. Sipe going deep. Good adjustment, but the catch is not made by Stone Sheffield out of the backfield. He done a, did a great job of getting open, but he couldn't bring it in. And well, he would have been well short of the first down, but yeah. it would have at least given him a chance to flip the field with the punt. Well, and he would have been about five yards, but you're exactly right. The, the punt would have given uh, Osceola 
a little bit worse field position than what they're going to get because right now their uh, punt returner is Travion Moore. He's going to be set up just inside the 40-yard line in Harding Academy territory. It's a pretty good punt. Bounds to the 40, and it's picked up and brought back by Trey Moore out of bounds at about the 33-yard line of Harding Academy. So they're going to be set up with great field position here. Halfway through the first quarter, each team has had one offensive possession. And again, Harding Academy, RJ, didn't have problems moving the football. They just couldn't get out of their own way yeah. with the penalties. Yeah, and this is where Osceola essentially gave the football up earlier. They were they were driving down, so now they're going to get great field position to, to try to get in the end zone again. I would imagine you're going to see a, a lot more of MJ Vance uh, run this offense. You saw where they mixed it up a little bit with Brandon Johnson on that first drive. I, I would imagine you see uh, MJ Vance run some more here on this drive. Osceola with state titles in 95 and 97. Lost to Boonville last year, 35 to nothing. And they're back again in 19. Vance to throw. Fires it incomplete. Bounced right off the shoulder pads of his intended receiver, Dan Newsom. And that was a strong arm in display right there. Well, Newsom looked upfield before the ball got to him. He was looking for the end zone because there wasn't a, a Harding Academy Wildcat within about three yards of him. So he was thinking this is going to be easy. Catch it and run. And he was looking upfield before he caught the football. Let's go down to Eric and get a quick injury update. Yeah, Scott, real quick, uh, good news here for Brandon Johnson. He worked uh, real quickly with uh, Ortho Arkansas, kind of worked out a right knee contusion. I expect him to be back in the way he was running up and down the sideline, so good news for Osceola. Vance to throw again. He's got a man at the sticks, and that is caught right at the first down marker by Greg Hooks, Jr., the leading receiver on this team, his 42nd catch of the year. It'll be third and short. Well, that's a great job by Hooks. He's the senior wide receiver, and Looks like there's a penalty flag down. Is that a flag over at well, the 29? There is. I think it fell well, out it of his pocket. Like, yeah, it must have either fallen out of one of the players' pockets or the officials' pockets. Could just be a, a rag, but you can clearly see it there. And now we're going to get a whistle and another flag. We're going to get a real flag over yeah. here on the sideline. That may be a player's towel. I'm not sure what it is. It is awfully big for a flag out there. One of the players is picking it up now and taking it off the field. What are you talking about, Scott? In that last game we did Offside, earlier. Offside on the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. The the flags we saw in the 2A game today, they had <laughs> tails on them that, that, that stretched out three yards. Parachutes. Yeah. So another penalty, this time on Osceola. Instead of third and about a yard, it's third and six. I think you're right. Maybe some early game jitters on both sides of the football for these teams. Well, you know, Osceola, this pretty much this entire group was here last year. So you wouldn't think the, the jitters would be as bad for them. Vance will hand it off to Davis. And Davis is... Oh, Vance kept the football. I'm sorry. Down to about the 25-yard line. He's going to be a little bit short of the first down. This looks like four down territory to me though on the RPO. Yeah, Vance kept it there. And gets down to within a yard of the stick. So it's fourth down and one and they're gonna go. Field goal kicker is Jacob O'Kane. He's only attempted two all year. He's one of two. This one would be out of his range more than likely, but it's also a short yardage situation. And Vance is gonna try to keep it himself and he is not gonna get there. No, he flipped ball. it back. He flips the ball back before he's down to Newson, and Newson will have the first down and more. Newson's going to score. Touchdown, Osceola. There is a penalty marker down back near the line of scrimmage where oh, Newson broke free. Well, they're going to call a hold on Osceola, but how about the heads-up play by MJ Vance to see his wide receiver behind him and flip it back to him to allow for him to run and that wasn't a called play. That was just that was just an athlete making a play. And just unfortunate now you've got a, a penalty flag. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty, still fourth down. Well, that may change whether you're gonna go for it here or not. You're still deep in your opponents in, so maybe not. I don't think they've got a field goal kicker to, to kick no. one this far. And 
You know, you're kind of in that no man's area where you're not, you don't really want to punt it. Might as well go for it. This is a direct snap to Devontaven Littleton, and Littleton tries to get the first down on the ground, and he's going to be well short. And it'll be a turnover on downs. Stop made by Gavin Sparks, a senior defensive end for Harding Academy, and the Wildcats are going to get the ball back. Hey, fans, for a copy of any of the state championship games, go to mmproductions.net to place your order today. And that's for all the state championship games. Just go to mmproductions.net. The defense in control early here in this one, just like the 2A game. And we've got movement again on Harding Academy. Scott, that's like, I think that's four of the last five plays. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. I think four of the last five plays have had a penalty for Harding Academy. If you're Coach, if you're coach Evans, how do you get a handle on this? Well, I mean, I think you don't want to call a timeout, but the next opportunity you get when the offense is on the sideline against the guys, it's just another football. They were quoted. In fact, Sipes was, or Sipe was quoted in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. As they asked him, you know, you're playing a state championship game. Are you going to have some nerves? And he said, look, yeah, the, stand, the stands are going to be bigger. The stadium's going to be bigger, but it's still a football game. It's still a 100-yard field. Get the snap off this time and move the pocket. Sipe in trouble. He is mobile, and he finds a receiver out at the 30-yard line, back at the original line of scrimmage. That catch made by Isaac Miller. A five-yard gain to get the penalty yardage back. He has good escapability, RJ. Yeah, he does. And that time, he went left with the football and saw, oh, can't go that way. So he cuts it back. And I think the most impressive thing about him is that his ability to throw on the run. He was, he was able to move with the offense and find his receiver and throw it while on the run. Sipe fires it complete on the run. Duggar and Duggar races out of bounds right at the first down yard marker at the 41 yard line. Jaden Brown took him out. It's a gain of 11 and a first down Wildcats. A lot of moving parts in this offense and uh, you, you, Sipe's going to find guys that he can catch while, while on the run and you saw it right there where it was just a crossing pattern. Hit him in stride and he was able to pick up the first down. Sipe on the RPO, in trouble, down he goes again in the backfield. Osceola not fooled. Chris Littleton from his defensive end spot makes the play. Well, Littleton and really anybody on that right side of the defensive line has been able to get through and put pressure on Sipe the last three plays. He's been under pressure and uh, just a, a lot of uh, weak areas on that right side of the offense or the left side of the offensive line that's allowing Osceola to get through. Third down, correction, second down, and 12 at the 39-yard line. Coach Hooks said they flow faster to the football on defense. Osceola does. They're not as fast as they were last year, but they flow faster to the football. They certainly did there. Sipe, again, having trouble in the pocket. He felt the pressure. He tucks it and runs, and now he's going to unload. Deep upfield, and he overthrew his intended man, Connor McGahey. You know, one thing you always hear coaches talk about is when a quarterback is mobile, is he able to keep his eyes downfield and, and keep looking for his guys? Watch him right here. Looks downfield. Oh, got to go this way. I'm not yeah. looking downfield, but I, I look back to find a receiver. He escapes and then finds the guy, just overshoots him. Well, you feel like maybe he gave up a little early there, yeah. too. Yeah. Felt the pressure because he's been harassed. That's what pressure could do to you. Did not want to stand in the pocket there. And it's third down and 12. Each team's had two possessions. And there's a timeout on the field. Neil Evans recognizing the importance of this third down play call, wants to talk things over, and we're going to step aside. No score early on. The 3A championship game, Osceola and Harding Academy. Back in a moment.
ready to watch the best of PBS anytime, anywhere, on nearly any device? It's easy with the free PBS Video app. Simply download the PBS Video app on your mobile or streaming device. Now you can watch the latest PBS episodes or catch up on the shows you missed. And when you support your local station, you can get PBS Passport, giving you access to more episodes, more specials, more of what you love. Get the free PBS video app now and stream the best of PBS anytime you want, anywhere you are. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. Third down and 12 for Harding Academy as we resume play late here in the first quarter. Coach Evans taking a timeout before this play. The first one burned, and here we go. Sight moves the pocket, sets up, unloads near sidelines, and it is caught at the 32 of Osceola by Ty Duggar. Pass may be underthrown a little bit, but boy, Duggar did a nice job. Well, what a great job by Duggar. He's got two guys on the defense right there, and watch this. I mean, great concentration. Watches the ball and is able to go up over the top of them, make the catch. Ooh. That's a big time play right there. Duggar, the top pass catcher on this Harding Academy team, came in with nearly 1,300 yards receiving on the year. It's first down and 10. Sipe on the play fake. Looks to throw back to his running back, and Sheffield overthrown. Well, that time he had, he had pressure in his face, and, and he was just trying to get the ball out of there and overshot his target. I'm not real sure if he, he would have been able to make the catch anyways, but either way, it was great. Great pressure by Osceola. Well, he's throwing deep a lot here early, so that requires some time, and he's not getting it. Osceola's doing a good job of getting pressure on the quarterback. They've been able to do that more this year, according to Coach Hooks as well, compared to last. And that is key defensively if you're going to play Harding Academy. They send people. The blitz is on. Sipe in trouble. Down he goes again. And this is a big loss back to the 47-yard line. Well, and one thing right there, Scott, was that Osceola, in, in the last couple times that they've put pressure on him, they only had one guy from the weak side. This time they had him surrounded. He couldn't go anywhere. He had a, they had a guy in front of him, a guy to the left, and a guy to the right. And uh, great job by that defense for Osceola. One of the keys Coach Hook said was is his defensive backs cannot leave their wide receiver covers when the quarterback starts to scramble. They're clearly doing a yeah. good job of that right now, staying with the receiver, not letting the quarterback extend plays, and putting pressure on him. Yet Harding Academy still has the ball at midfield. But now they're back on their own end. Back-to-back -back sacks again and huge yardage lost. Marlon Vance. Spin sight down way back at his own 40-yard line. That's a loss of 14. Scott, watch the replay. Vance just beats his man. I mean, he, he swim moves on the left side and just goes after the quarterback. That's your quarterback on offense <laughs> going after the other quarterback and was able to make the big loss. They've got to get a – in order to get a first down, it's four, fourth and 37. They've got to get all the way back to the 33 and the other end of the field. Here comes the punt. Another good punt, fielded on the run. He fumbled. And a fumble on the play. Harding Academy thinks they've got it. Osceola says they've got it, so we'll unravel the pack here and see. It is Osceola football. Well, that could have that could been bad for Osceola right there. It's, it, it looked like the punt returner for Osceola, Travion Moore, was kind of undecided whether he wanted to catch that thing or not. And it was just a last-minute catch, and – he, he committed to it and ended up fumbling. Osceola's going to huddle up on the sidelines. I didn't see whether they called timeout. They've started the play clock, so they haven't. Now they make their way off the sidelines with 37 seconds left in this first quarter. Looks like Johnson may be back out there. That's good to see. He was hurt on defense, if you remember, early on in the quarter. 
and they'll give it to their running back. Big hole off the left side. Johnson bangs his way over the 35-yard line. That's a good first down run all the way out to the 38. Parker Golden made the stop. It'll be second in a yard after a gain of nine. They don't have to snap it again, but they're right up on the football with 15 seconds to go in the quarter. They're going to keep it on the ground again, but this time it's sniffed out. Johnson had no chance. Carter Miller gets him in the backfield. And Johnson comes off since his helmet came off, and that's going to be the final play of the quarter. This one's starting a little bit like that 2A game did earlier today. A scoreless first quarter. The defense is being very disruptive on both sides, and we're back for quarter number two in a moment. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Osceola with 25 yards of offense, Harding Academy with 42 in that first quarter, and we're scoreless as we go to the second quarter. Third down and three. Vance swings it out to Davis out of the backfield, and Davis lays contact on a would-be defender, and that gets him close to the first down yard marker. The tackle made by Ty Duggar. Let's see about the spot. It's going to be good enough to move the chains. Well, I thought he got a really good spot right there, Scott. It you know, I, I'm not on that far side, but it, it looked like it was going to be close, and they, they gave him a really good spot. Hand off again to Newsom, and Newsom breaks a tackle. He's got the first down and more. Down the far sidelines. Tries to cut back at the 20. And then angles towards the pylon. Touchdown, Osceola. What a run by Dan Newson. 61 yards. Well, he ran 61 yards, but he may have really run about 70 by the time he cut back in and was juking and jiving spin moves. And that's just athleticism. That is raw athleticism at its finest. And nice cutback right here to get back into the end zone. And just, uh, he was out of gas by the time he hit that pylon. Jacob O'Kane is on for the point after. He's 25 of 36. We didn't see many of these in the afternoon game. Didn't see any of these no. games in the afternoon game. Back to the conventional one point after. Oh, the rush is on. A low kick, but it gets it through. Harding Academy really pressured that point after. A four-play 71-yard drive, and Osceola draws first blood in the 3A championship game here in Little Rock. Back in a moment. I was married to Fred Rogers for a little over 50 years. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful PBS day was very day. important to him. He had gone around to check out what was this thing called educational television. And he said, 
I like it. Mine won't you be my neighbor. It's so important to have those values carried on for every child and every family. Please won't you be my neighbor. As time passes and the years go by, change is something we all experience. But no matter how the world changes from year to year, the one thing that will never change is the true meaning of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Okay, to kick off for the Seminoles, Stone, Sheffield, and Ty Duggar are the deep men for the Wildcats. After Osceola takes a 7-0 lead, the deep man will not have a shot. Uh, they kick it off short. I don't know. That was between a sky kick and an onside kick. I don't really know uh, what to call that. that was, you know what that's called? It's called a line drive. <laughs> it's a line drive, it was a line drive that yeah. had a little slider mixed into it <laughs> and uh, went right at the up man. And so Harding Academy is going to get great field position. Hey, do you know someone who couldn't make it to the game? Remind them to watch it on statewide TV on AETN. Let's go down to Eric. He's got more on the Harding Academy quarterback. All uh, right, Scott, uh, if you look at Caden Sipes' right ankle, now I watched this very closely. Not only did they wrap it on the inside, they went ahead and heavily wrapped it over his uh, cleats as well. And, you know, that we've all been through ankle issues. He's going to play. He's going to try to fight it out. But, uh, boy, that defensive line of Osceola really made him work, and he got turned up somewhere there because he's got a heavily casted ankle almost with all that tape. Back shoulder throw is incomplete. Had a lot of juice on it intended for McGahey. You notice that time they tried to get the ball out a little quicker, though, since he's been under such duress, RJ. I think that's a good move. Yeah, you know, you're gonna, you're, I would imagine you're going to see a lot more dinking and dunking and, and less of him holding on the football and going with a deep route. That, that would make more sense if he's got a – if that ankle's giving him any issues. I, I'll tell you this. Sipe is not going to come out of this football game because of an ankle injury. Yeah, they could have to cast that thing up for him to have to miss this thing. Second and ten. Sipe on the draw. And he has good running room across midfield and into Seminole territory. Brought down by Jabari Person, the linebacker for the Seminoles. It's an eight-yard gain, and that brings up a third and two. Well, the ankle's fine. I mean... Showed a little bit of speed right there, right up the middle. 500-yard rusher. Yeah, precautionary. That's that's what we call that. Osceola shows blitz. And Harding Academy responds by looking to the sidelines. Perhaps calling an audible here. Sipe's going to keep it off the right side. He had looked there like he was going to make an option pitch, but nobody was there to pitch to. He keeps it for the first down. I think he was going to intend to throw down the line of scrimmage to his wide receiver, but then he looked over and saw that he was covered up all day long, and so he wouldn't have, he wouldn't be able to throw it to him. So back-to-back -back quarterback runs, moves the chains for the Wildcats. Sipe over the middle. It's caught by McGahey, and McGahey is – McGahey, rather, I'm sorry, is close to the first down yardage. Greg Hooks, Jr., makes the stop. You saw Sipe look one way and then come back to the middle of the field that time. Well, and he, the other thing you're seeing is there in the first quarter, Harding Academy, they were running deep routes. They were running post patterns. They were running fly routes, out routes. Everything's now closer to the line of scrimmage. Another quick strike to the far sidelines. And that pass is caught again by McGahey. It's a pickup of eight. Tackle made by a person again. Wildcats right back up on the football, trying to create a little pace now, a la Shiloh Christian a little bit from last night. RPO keeper by the quarterback, and Sipe is inside the 20-yard line. Harding Academy into the red zone. 
Stop made by Anthony Harris. Well, this is what they couldn't get going in the first quarter was allowing Forsythe to run with the football. And, and you didn't see him run with it at all in the first day. He was running for his life, really. And, and now they're working the offense to where he can get positive momentum running the ball. Sipe to throw again, has to scramble to buy some time, and he connects at the 10-yard line. A big hit is laid, but the receiver hangs on. Isaac Miller with a catch right at the first down marker. Great job with concentration, holding on after taking that big hit, and, and you know, gets out of bounds, but this is the best drive Harding Academy's had all, all night so far. Newsom delivered that lick. It's first and goal. Sipe looked like he was going to run. Now throws to the back of the end zone incomplete. He had a receiver, but it was broken up. That pass was tipped. Intended for Miller again. Dan Newsom, though, got his paw on it. Yeah, I, I thought he had him in the back of the end zone. He had enough separation and just yeah. couldn't he couldn't float it over the corner to find his man. And nice defensive play by Osceola. Miller still in there. Five wideouts in the formation for Caden Sipe. Sipe, that pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. Was that Newsom again? Yeah, it was Newsom. And, and Scott, we'll see it on the replay, but a great job by Newsom. He was essentially playing as a spy. He was working on the outside, didn't allow for Sipe to run with the football. Watch him over here. Just sits, sits, sit, sits, waits. Okay, he's not going to run. I'm going to go after him. Throws his arms up and deflects it. Great job by Newsom that time, playing his position and, and keeping keeping Sipe at bay. Third down and goal. A reverse. Inside the 10. Inside the 5 and Knocked out of bounds at about the three-yard line. Ty Duggar gets it to the three, but now it's fourth down in decision time. I don't know if there's much of one here. They do have a field goal kicker, Ben Sloan, who is four of six in field goals on the year, but they're going to go. I wouldn't be surprised right here if you see Sipe run with the football like he did earlier on this drive. Just a quarterback keeper, take it off right tackle and into the end zone. Or even go off left side. That's your weak side. Let's see what they do right here. Big play early in the game on fourth and goal. Sight throws in zone. Touchdown, Harding Academy. Connor McGahey. Well, Coach Neil Evans is, is very confident in his quarterback when you don't have a lot of field to work with and goes with a slant pass on that, off that slot man and just able to get the, the touchdown. Great job by... Harding Academy's Connor McGahey, who was able to get separation off the slant and take it in for a touchdown. Ben Sloan on for the point after. And we are all tied up at War Memorial. A touchdown pass for Caden Sipe to Connor McGahey. He's a big target, too. Six foot four, going across the middle in the end zone. 11 plays, 57 yards, 2 minutes and 33 seconds. That was the drive for Harding Academy after Sipe hooked up with Connor McGahey for their first score of the ball game. And Scott, we saw a very defensive ball game in the first quarter. Starting to see the offense has come, al come alive here in the second quarter. Well, you kind of had that feeling, didn't you? Because Harding Academy, if they could have avoided the four false start penalties, were moving the football yeah. very early. They were just unable to get out of their own way. And Osceola has explosive athletes, explosive playmakers on the other side of the football. Yeah, I, I'm really impressed with, with Sipe and, and how he, he just commands the pocket and, and finds receivers, has a quick arm, great arm, you know, great arm, quick decision maker, and, and has done a great job. And uh, now you, you saw that that was a, a almost a three-minute drive for Harding Academy. What's Osceola do to, to answer that now? We'll see first if they're going to kick it deep. There are dangerous return men, and they are going to kick it deep. It's Newsom with a chance. Turns the corner. 
upfield to the 40 and brought down at the 44 yard line. There is a flag down way back at the 26. Well, the, I think they're gonna call a block in the back on Osceola and, and I'd like to see the replay of that because I, I thought he got on the front side of, of the guy he was blocking, but you know the official was right there in front of it and called it called the block in the back and I'll be interested to see what, what they say. I think we'll get a, a replay after the call. And, uh, you know, I was wrong earlier. We, we thought there was going to be a uh, hitting of a defenseless player down in that first game and yeah. end up being a unsportsmanlike out of bounds. Line side block, non-flagrant, against the receiving team, half the distance, first down. So it wasn't a block in the back, but it was a, a blind side block. Let's take a look at this because as he cuts back, the, the block's coming up right up, right about here. Boom. Yeah, I guess you, that is a, a bit of a blindside block. A good call right there. He, just, uh, he was set up, and, and the Harding Academy player never saw him coming. I mentioned the dangerous return men. Newsom does not have a touchdown on a kickoff, but two other guys do. Trey Moore with two and Greg Hooks Jr. with a kickoff return for a touchdown. They've got eight non-offensive touchdowns, Osceola does, so... Flags again come in before the snap of the football. All kind of movement up front there. Prior to the snap, snap infraction, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Scott, we've already had nine penalties between the two teams in this game. And wow. we're, we're still in the first half. Wow. And we thought we had a lot earlier today. Remember, a kickoff return could have had the ball to 44. And now the penalty brought it back from the kickoff return, and now another false start. Vance throws out to his running back, Johnson. And Johnson gets back to the 10. That's going to be all. Braden Oliver makes the stop from his strong safety position for Harding Academy. It's a four-yard game. He was brought down just shy of the original line of scrimmage, so it's second down and 11. Vance hit in the backfield and dropped. Well, that time they just came with an all-out blitz, and they knew Vance was going to try to run with the football, and they, they came, everything on the strong side, just offensive lineman lost his man, and that time for Harding Academy, that was Keaton Chapman, who beat his man, got in there to get the sack. Chapman came into the game with 14 tackles for loss. He just got another one. I say it was a sack. It's actually just a, a tackle for loss because he wasn't going to throw the football. Third and 14, Vance fires it out. On the screen pass, Greg Hooks Jr., well short of the first down. Now this would be a punting situation, I would imagine, for Osceola and try to give Harding Academy, get them back in their own end of the field as we're under seven to play here in the first half. Nice contingent of Osceola fans that have made the long drive down here to Little Rock. Okay, back out on to punt it away. This one will bound around midfield. Will be left alone. Takes a nice Osceola bounce. And they'll blow it dead right on top of the 40-yard line. Good that's punt. a 43-yard punt. Yeah, that's a good punt for, for uh, Osceola. Now it puts Harding Academy in their own end of the tip. On into the field, and uh, we'll see what Harding Academy does. Hey, we want to say a special thank you to Corky's Ribs and Barbecue for the catering they have done for all the state championships. They have restaurants in Little Rock and North Little Rock. Go by and see Big Joe Klein at either one of those locations today. I imagine he'll fix you up with some good barbecue. 
I know Joe watched uh, the games last year. I assume he's yeah. probably watching the games, some of the games this year again. Yeah. Big fan of high school football. So Caden Sight back out there, and he goes to work up top the near sidelines. It is caught by Isaac Miller. And Miller's out of bounds at the 35-yard line. It's just great job. I mean, just great touch by Seip. Great job by his wide receiver as he was able to get in stride. Isaac Miller caught it in stride. Just all around good play. Again, getting the ball out quickly. I think that's been a big key to the turnaround for Harding. Rather than Seip holding it and going through progressions, he is just releasing very quickly. That was a 25-yard gain, and he's going back to work again, looking for Sheffield, and it's incomplete, went in and out of his hands. Now that time they had the diamond formation set up on that far side of the field, and they had Sheffield on the near side. He was the lone man that ran a post pattern, and uh, you would think in a, in a situation like that you would look to the four guys that are on the on, on the far side, but Sheffield was able to get separation, and, and it just went right through his hands. Sight 10 of 18. Passing so far in the game. Throws his 11th completion there. It's caught by Carter Neal, but it's a short gain. He is pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line. It's only a gain of three. You know, there's a reason why Caden Sype was a 73% completion percentage passer during the regular season. I mean, the guy, he's good. He, he, he's he got great vision of the field, and, and, I, and not only is he just a great passer, but the play calling that is being done is set up so where res receivers are in open space that it, it's going to be easy to dump off a pass to them. Well, the Osceola defensive backs playing way off those receivers too, giving them a little bit of cushion. That pass complete to Miller, and he's got open field inside the 10, bang down at the six-yard line, and a flag comes in late right where the contact was. Trey Moore makes the stop. We'll see what we get here. Could be a personal foul against Osceola. We have unnecessary roughness with targeting on the defense. That player is ejected. Oh, wow. Trey Moore, one of the best tacklers on Osceola's team, came in with 74 stops. He is going to be ejected from the football game. They are going to review it. Yeah, you know. That's one yeah. thing with the new triple A instant replay is that uh, any ejection is going to be under review, and, and rightfully so. But, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't get to see the replay just a moment ago, but he did look like he, he may have led with his head on, the, on that just from watching it in real time. Here's the replay right now, and you see Trey Moore come in. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. he led with the, the top of his head, and that, that's going to be called targeting every time. Yep, I I think that's going to be all for Mr. Moore tonight, unfortunately. They will review it. Gives us a chance to remind you to stay tuned. The AETN Halftime Show is coming up in about five minutes and 37 seconds. Ed Leon, AETN's Chief Operating Officer. He's going to take a look at eight-man football in Brinkley and take things off the physical field and into the virtual with eSports. Is that replay being looked at again? By the way, you know that eSports stuff, the AAA uh, yeah. it now has it as part of their their um, sporting events that, that they sponsor. And I, I tell you, I'll tell you more in just a second. That play is con confirmed. Half the distance, first down, the player is ejected. The uh, Back to the eSports. You know, I was talking with Derek Walters of the Arkansas Activities Association. That Ooh. is a really neat uh, program that they have and you know it's one of the fastest growing sports and, and you call it a sport because it's it is what it is I mean it, it's it's sponsored but uh, kids everywhere they're having big e-gaming um, tournaments in Los yeah. Angeles and in big arenas yes. people come and watch it yeah it's pretty neat yeah 
not to take away from the football game or anything. I'm just I mean, to throw you, that out there. You had a minute. Yeah. Harding Academy trying to take the lead back. They scored. Osceola evened it up. All the scoring so far in the second quarter. Handoff Sheffield, and he will make it into the end zone for a Harding Academy touchdown. That was too easy. Yeah, really he easy. Just walked in the end zone for the touchdown. There was nothing special about that one. He just went straight up the middle and got a good block from his offensive line and was able to take it in for the score. Ben Sloan for the point after. And he missed it. Let's go down to Eric. All right, Scott, I uh, had a really good look. I was about 5, 10 yards away from the Trey Moore hit, and uh, the receiver already was down, sliding on the ground, and he certainly did dive into him as a target. He, he has been uh, ejected, and he was escorted out the bi uh, building. Now, uh, listening in to Robert Hooks, head coach Osceola, uh, he kind of likes what their defense has done so far. I mean, they've held Harding Academy to 13 points. That drive wasn't very impressive, but he was reiterating to his defense, guys, we can get to their offensive line. They've already hobbled the quarterback just a little bit. Bit, so they're happy with their defense. Now, offensively, they've got to make something happen because they just can't rely on the big plays. And guys, when they get a big play, it's been called back every time. So let's see what they do on this drive. All right. Harding Academy, five plays, 60 yards, and 50 seconds that time, Scott. And Sipe now 12 of 20 for 157 yards, a touchdown pass earlier in the quarter. 20 pass attempts with 529 to go in the second quarter. That'll let you know about this Wildcat offense. Sloan to kick off. Osceola with dangerous return men. They switched it up a little bit on us there though. Stephen Coleman, number 13 on the return. He's got a different helmet and everything. Wow. Well, he, He's uh, rubbed all the chrome off of his. That's, that's, so. that's playing a lot, so he, all the chrome's gone. Hey, I want to remind fans that if you want a copy of today's state championship game or any of the state championship games that have been played over the last two weekends, go to mmproductions.net to place your order today. MJ Vance back at quarterback. And on the draw, Vance with good yardage all the way to the 41-yard line. He'll be a yard shy of the first. About a nine-yard pickup will bring up a second down and one for the Seminoles. Well, I tell you, Vance is a, he's a speedy character, isn't he? Uh, he hits a hole, and I'd like to know what his 40 time is. 4-8 speed is what we were told. Coach Hooks told us that. Yeah, they must not have been using a laser. <laughs> Here he goes again. Finds room again, has the first down, and then turn back at the 47. That's a pickup of seven yards. Stop is made by Gavin Sparks for Harding Academy. And this is what the first score for Osceola, this is what made them so successful was allowing Vance to run and, and really keeping the ground game going and, and making it very successful. Quarterback makes the offense go. There's no question about that. And he will keep it himself again. This time, Harding Academy stays home. And Keaton Chapman able to get to the quarterback. And he is still on the ground. Take a look at the replay here. May have hit his head on the turf. Yeah, that's what I thought he did. He hit his, banged his head on the turf. Well, I tell you what, you, Osceola can't afford to lose anybody else, especially their quarterback. 
He also plays linebacker for Osceola, and now let's hope that he's okay. We'll get Eric to check on him as he makes his way back to the sidelines. But boy, that you never like seeing a kid's head bounce off that turf. The backup quarterback is Dontaven Littleton. He's a sophomore. He has played a little bit this year. He's 19 of 37 for 345 yards, a 51% completion percentage. He's thrown seven touchdowns, one pick. We don't know for sure if that's been late in games that they were winning. He's played a little running back tonight. He has a carry for four yards. I think he's sitting up now. And we don't know if it's a – a lot of times it's a neck yeah. situation when you bounce your head off the turf like that. They want to be very careful, even if he's saying he's okay, but they do have him up. And he may be a little wobbly. And the other thing, you worry about a concussion yeah. as well. And the way that he's he's walking, boy, he almost shows all the signs of that. So he'll make his way over the sideline. We'll have Eric check in on him to find out his status for the rest of the ball game. You hate to see that, though. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Eric. All right, Scott and RJ watching uh, the quarterback uh, to get back, uh, Mr. Vance, get over to the sidelines. Uh, the Ortho Arkansas, of course, doing a great job this weekend. Uh, they're going to get him down for uh, concussion protocol. He seems to be favoring that left knee. You guys probably noticed uh, he's got a massive brace on the left knee. He's kind of limping a little bit, but it's it's his head. Uh, you guys hit it right when he slammed back down against the turf, and they're getting the helmet off right now. And uh, the doctors are working on him to see if uh, he's okay, guys. All right, Eric, thank you. It is going to be Littleton replacing him at quarterback on this second down play, and he's going to throw, and he's going to go deep. Big arm from Littleton. He's got a man. It's caught at the 10. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Osceola. Touchdown, Stephen Coleman. <laughs> I mean, coming off the bench, they say, hey, we need the backup. Bring the backup in. Hey, your first play, you're going to go deep with it. How about that, huh? And he said, yeah, no problem, coach. I'm going to just sling it the length of the field and go for a touchdown, type this, try to tie up this ball game. Oh, did they call him down? No, they signaled touchdown. Okay, They're yeah. bringing him in for the extra point. Yeah. Now he's still out there. You don't have a hard time find the number 13 on the field. They may be going to review this, Yeah, though. that's what it is. Uh, I thought maybe his knee may have come down around the one. He actually outran the – he actually outran the back judge. The, the back judge was trying to keep up, and he outran <laughs> the back judge. So there was nobody at the goal line to, to signal whether it was a touchdown or not. And That's the beauty of instant replay is if they don't get it right instantly, they somebody can call down and say, hey, I want to take another look at this. Again, a reminder, they'll be using the AET and camera angles, so the replays you see at home are the ones that the review officials are looking at. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that replay while we're at it. And, yeah, he's going to be down right did about it, the two-yard line. Wind that back one more time. Did, did it hit before he dove? Like, yeah, he'll come down, boom, right there. Right there he's down? Yeah, and so he, the ball will probably be placed about the one. Great effort and yeah. great job by Harding Academy to go in and stop him from scoring. You got to think if you're that back judge, though, you're thinking, my goodness, what? I, got, I need to start playing about 30 yards back. It's a pretty quick review. Here's Travis Douglas. After a review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands. Huh? They well, must, they must have saw an angle that we didn't see. Well, I think I think there's a an absence of an angle because it has to be. You know, we, there was really not a camera at the goal line, and that's although it does look like he was well shy, I don't know where you'd spot it. Right? Uh, that's and, a, that's a great point. You got to have uh, you got to have enough evidence to be able to say it's going to go down at the one. O'Kane punches through the extra point, and that gives Osceola the lead. 14-13 after a four-play, 68-yard drive. That is the thing I think you have to keep in mind with the high school, the yeah. use of review in, in high school in these games is you're not going to have multiple camera angles like you do in a college game and a pro game. It's got to be irrefutable, and if you don't have the angle to give you that, they're going to uphold it. Yeah, and what do they tell us? I think they've got five or six camera angles yep. here at War Memorial. And so, um, you know, and you're right, Scott, it, 
they may with it being a high school they may have not had it right there on the goal line to, to chill to tell and you saw the folks that saw it on tv is a, essentially what they were looking at in the booth so um Either way, at least you, you're able to go back and look at it and, and somewhat tell. But how about the story? The real story here is Littleton coming off the bench. Yes. And yes. You think a backup quarterback, you're going to keep it, play it safe, at oh. least a short pass to give him some confidence, and he just unloads. And, and not only does he do that, but he gives Harding, Harding Academy, or he gives uh, Osceola a one-point lead because Harding Academy missed the extra point. O'Kane to kick off, and Harding Academy creeping up, expecting another short kick, and it will be a worm burner scooped up at the 40 or the 37-yard line by Carter Neal. He gets it back to the 38, maybe even the 39. Scott, I, I got to read this to you because our our, our our partner in crime, Bobby Swafford, who uh, has done games with you over the weekend, and he sends me a text. He says, you killed the booth reviews perfect record <laughs> i guess bobby was well, was perfect on those on those booth reviews and well so. we may have had a draw there yes may, there may have been a draw in there somewhere okay well i i think we 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 took it as a win we claimed it <laughs> yes well bobby's always going to be right uh, anybody knows bobby he's always right glad he's at home watching yes. tonight so here come the wildcats again late in the quarter Finding themselves down by one. Sight fires it out complete to Ty Duggar at the 47-yard line of Osceola. And that's going to be a Harding Academy first down. Reminder, the halftime show coming up at the end of this quarter with Ed Leon. A look at eight-man football in Brinkley and eSports. First and ten. Sipe to the sidelines. Tried the back shoulder throw to McGahey, but it bounced off of Greg Hooks Sr. incomplete. By the way, I, I, a lot of folks watching in from the Searcy area tonight for watching their Harding Academy Wildcats. and. I was misquoted. Uh, I, I said earlier that the Christmas parade's on Tuesday, and they, they, the city officials in Searcy want everybody to know it's on Monday night. So if you're watching, <laughs> the Christmas parade is on Monday night. All right, all right. Yes. You don't want them showing up late. No, a do, day not, late. do not show up on Tuesday. The parade is on Monday. <laughs> Might have lots of parades if they have two state champions. Yes. Sipe on the quarterback keeper. And Sipe. Will be right at the first down, and he'll have it inside the 35-yard line down to the 31. Plenty of time on that clock. Coleman brings him down. Still two timeouts if the Wildcats need it, but they're not even really in any kind of hurry right now as they try to reclaim the lead. I had a feeling putting the spot boards together and talking to the coaches. This might be the best game of the weekend, and right now it's shaping up to be. Sight going deep. His receiver had a step, but the pass just a bit overthrown. Ty Duggar, the intended receiver, and Coleman, the guy who caught the touchdown for Osceola in coverage. I gotta, you got to love these guys going both ways. Oh, yeah. And, and he just got turned around. He, he thought the ball was going to come on the inside and looked, said, oh, it's going to be over my left shoulder. So he had to get turned around, just got a bit discombobulated. And, just went right off the top of his hands. Second and ten. Sipe has all day. Crossing route incomplete intended for Miller. Well, you almost would say, Sipe, you only have three seconds to throw because he's almost on perfect when he's got yeah. those. And he's got a whole bunch of time. It just sailed a little bit. Let's go down to Eric. 
All right, uh, Scott and RJ, uh, not good news on MJ Vance, uh, quarterback for Osceola. He was uh, uh, left with the doctors and his parents to go up to the locker room to get even more evaluation. So Osceola has got to deal with that uh, as they get into this second half here in just a little bit. But he has have been uh, moved into the locker room for further evaluation for their star quarterback. All right, man, you hate to see that. You hate to hear that. Eric, thank you for the update, though. Third down and 10. Sight gets it out quick again. With success, it's caught by Duggar. Duggar is rolled down at the 21-yard line, and that's going to be a Harding Academy first down. Chris Littleton with the stop for the Seminoles. And Osceola had, had a chance to make a stop right there, and he was able to sidestep that, pick up the first down, and just another slant pattern that Sipe was able to hook up with and get positive yardage. By the way, Littleton is a defensive end for Osceola. How about him hustling downfield yeah. to make that stop? Oh, I know it. I, I tell you what, you, you've got defensive ends playing quarterback. you got <laughs> you got <laughs> offensive linemen playing linebackers. I mean, you got to love small-town football. Wildcats threaten as we go under two minutes in the half. Wide open in the end zone, and a great catch is made for the touchdown. Ty Duggar. Hauls it in, and the Wildcats back out in front. It's a 21-yard touchdown pass. Well, they got separation from the corner that time. I believe the corner got tripped up out on the outside. We'll see it right here. It was a great move. He was looking that way the entire time. Now it was just a great move by the wide receiver. What a catch. Yeah, and make that catch for the touchdown. That's a great route by Duggar. It was just an out and up, and he's left the corner in his dust. We'll see here if the Wildcats may want to go for two to make it a seven-point lead. I believe Harding Academy called a timeout, Scott. They may be talking it over here. Yeah. Both teams are making their way to the bench, and while they do, I'll tell you, to join AETN in January with a new Saturday Night Mystery lineup, it starts at 8 p.m. with two episodes of Myth Midsummer Murders followed by Shakespeare and Hathaway and Frankie Drake Mysteries. Sign up for all the updates at AETN.org. Well, for Ty Duggar, he's up over 100 yards already. Six catches, 101 yards receiving, including that touchdown. It's a big state championship game for him, but he's just doing what he's been doing all season. He has 89 catches on yeah. the season now. And look at Sipe, his numbers so far, 15 of 26 for 203 yards and two touchdowns. He came in the ball game with a 73% completion percentage and just kind of staying on par with that tonight as right now he's a little below that, but the, the yards is 203 so far with two scores. Wildcats do go for two. Sipe again has a wide open man, but that pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. And the two-point conversion fails. So a missed extra point, now a failed two-point conversion. And it is a five-point Wildcat lead. Seven plays, 61 yards, a minute 48 for the Wildcats. And, you know, that first quarter, we've seen it so many times in these state championship games where both teams trying to feel each other out. And you don't see a lot of offense because you just – a lot of times, I think Eric said it in the two-way game, a lot of coaches are going to script out their first 10 plays. Uh, whatever it may be, if they don't work, they don't work, but you're just going to feel each other out. I think that's what you saw between both these teams there in the first quarter. There was not a lot of offense, a lot of defense being played. The offenses are now starting to come alive uh, as we've seen a lot of our scoring here in the second quarter. Well, it's way too early to tell, but with the way Littleton came off the bench for MJ Vance, we may have a Jalen Hurts to a tongue of Aloha situation going on here. I, I'm impressed with Littleton's arm. I, I mean, he, he threw that, that touchdown pass on a rope. Yeah, it was. It was a great pass, and it looks like he's going to be out there. As Eric told us, MJ Vance is not on the field now. They took him back for further evaluation. Coleman is going to be back deep to return for Osceola. Dangerous return men. But they've been kicking it deep. Sloan will do it again. This is going to be Newsom. Newsom from his own 10. Tries to find room up the sidelines. Another flag coming in. That one from 30 yards away. And it is holding against the Seminoles. Looking at our penalty count. 
We're now to, so far in the first half, 11 penalties. Wow. That's between both schools. Holding on the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the Spotify. First down. For Osceola, that's six penalties for 45 yards. And for Harding Academy, that's five penalties for 31 yards. So we'll see how the Seminoles want to play it. Backup quarterback who just threw a bomb for a touchdown is only throw, only play. He's been out there. Now he's got to settle in and run a drive. 152 left. You're down five. You got all three timeouts. I don't imagine Coach Hooks is going to take his foot off the accelerator much here. Littleton. Littleton fires complete for the first down to Coleman again. And these two like hooking up. There is a flag down, though. I think Littleton was hit late because he threw it, and then the penalty flag came out. I like watching Littleton throw, much like Sipe. He's got a big arm. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Gets the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. That's a big penalty right there, Scott. They already had the first down, so this is going to move the ball out to near midfield. The line of scrimmage will be the 48. Take a look. Oh, yeah. Yep, call that all day, every day. So Dontavon Littleton, two for two, coming off the bench. Osceola still with all three timeouts. Littleton's going to throw again. He looked like he was winding up again for a deep ball, but now he's going to keep it himself and get into Harding Academy territory to the 46-yard line, six-yard pickup. How about Levi the, Mercer, the freshman, brought him down. How about the fact that you've got a backup quarterback in Littleton who steps in and, and acts like he's played almost every snap? I mean, just comes in with confidence, two for two passing for 66 yards that last time. The pocket closed down. He said, okay, well, I'm just going to run with it. Picks up good yardage on that, seven yards on the play. Backup sophomore quarterback. Trying to give Osceola the lead back. Give him seven on that run. It's second and three. Had trouble with the snap, and he's going to unload deep upfield again. And the pass is incomplete, and there's no flag. <laughs> Intended for Coleman. Coleman had a lot of contact from Isaac Miller. We'll see if it was before the ball got there. Take a look. Yeah, uh, I don't think it was. I think yeah. it, yep. I think it was right on time. And yep. Good no call by the officials. And you know, I, I know the Osceola fans are not happy with with the result, but I, I think that was a good no call. That it, it was kind of a bang bang play. Third down and three. That was Littleton's first incompletion, by the way. Pumps, and now has room for to get the first down and more. Back to the center of the field, and Littleton is inside the Harding Academy 30. They still haven't burned a timeout. We're down to 38 seconds. Andrew Miller brought him down. Scott, you got to think, as a backup quarterback, comes in with a minute 38 to go. A lot of coaches say, okay, we're just going to run this thing out and go to the locker room. This kid comes in, hair's on fire, just running around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run for first downs, pass for him. Littleton fires it high. Over the middle, his first errant pass intended for Newson. Got to say, Scott, he, he does not lack confidence. The nope. deep pass is his friend. And he has a big arm. Yeah. I think I'd have confidence, too, yes. if I had that kind of arm. Yes, I, I would dream of having an arm that big. But listen, if you're going to miss high, yeah. you're not going to throw a pick either. No, you're not. So, not a bad place to hang out. Final 20 seconds of the half. Out into the flat. That pass is caught by Greg Hooks, Jr., and he's brought down at the 21-yard line. Osceola will burn their first time out here. They had all three prior to that. You know, one thing about Littleton being in the pocket, Scott, is, you know, Harding Academy prepared all week for Vance and his ability to – they knew what he did with his feet. They – 
he ran for over a thousand yards throughout the season threw for well, almost over 2,000 yards this season and this is a that you had a game plan you knew what he was going to do now you got Littleton in here they I, I bet you they didn't prepare for Littleton to come right. in the game and, and do what he's doing and so you, you got to kind of feel him out for the first couple series to see how he, how you're going to play him and so far just watching it, you say well he's just like Vance he's going to run and throw and um, you know he's I think probably a little bit faster than Vance uh, but playing really well so far let's go down to Eric on RJ's point, the uh, Harding Academy coaches scrambling as we speak here on their sideline, trying to get as much info on Littleton as they can. And I did speak to quarterback uh, Caden Sipe. I said, man, how's that leg doing? How's that ankle doing? He says, man, I'll be fine. I said, what about tomorrow? He says, I'll worry about that tomorrow. Well, I got a game to win tonight. All right, Eric, here we go. After the timeout, third and long, Littleton sets up, and he's got a man open near the goal line. It is caught. Out of bounds, Newson. No, they're no, say, they say he got in. He stretched his arm and got the football over the goal line for the touchdown. What a play right there. That, that might be the play of the game. Watch this. Littleton rears back, has a corner route. Receiver's about to go out of bounds, and he goes, nope, I'm going to get inside. Great athletic oh play. Goodness. Wow. Now they may review that, but I think that's going to stay if that they is, do. That is a great play. Only the third touchdown catch of the year for Dan Newson. O'Kane for the point after, and it is blocked. Cannot be advanced, and with six seconds left, it's a one-point Osceola lead. Boy, that is close, but I think he's clearly in bounds. Yes, I want to see that replay one more time because yeah, you know, a lot of people might may think, well, did he step out of bounds? And he he was able to tiptoe that sideline and just stretch the ball out there. Uh, great job by by our camera guys to get that angle. Seven plays, 80 yards. A minute 53 was the final tally on that drive. But boy, that uh, what a what a play. Second touchdown of the game for Newsom. He had a, that 61-yard run. Here comes that replay, Scott. Look at that. Boy, just tippy toe that sideline and Man. dive. Back. That's just straight athleticism. We have seen some fantastic plays made by receivers on both sides in this game. Touchdown catches. Yeah. Well, now you've got six seconds left in the half, and. I would imagine you're probably going to see another one of those little squib kicks that we've we've seen throughout the game so far. What a game this has been so far. I, you always save the best for last, they say. This has been a dandy. Playmakers making plays. Ground ball up the middle, fielded by Johnson. Correction, I'm sorry, Sheffield. And Sheffield brings it up to the 40 with two seconds left. Time for one more play for the Wildcats. And they will call a timeout. They'll burn their final timeout to see how they want to play this. They could throw a Hail Mary here. Sipe certainly got the arm strength to get it down close. I don't think he, I don't know for sure, but I would be surprised if he'd get it to the end zone from here. I, you know, if I'm Harding Academy, I just run the football, go to the locker room, re, regroup a little bit, played a good first half, go back to the locker room. You're only down by one going into the into the halftime locker room. I, I think you just let that two seconds run off and head back. But do you call a timeout to do that? That's, well, that's why. That's what's got me thinking they're going to do something here. Yeah, I, I mean. Or you just burn it because you can't take it with you. And that's possible, I, I mean, too. I'm sitting here looking at the coaching staff for Harding Academy, and they're, <laughs> they're at, I mean, it's like they're drawing up plays in the, in the <laughs> dirt. You run a post pattern, you run a fly, and we'll, we'll see who gets closest. But, hey, look, this is a high-flying Harding Academy offense, and I, it would not surprise me if they air it out right here. You see Sipe there. He's still favoring that ankle. See that right ankle all taped up. Now Osceola says, you know what, we're going to need some more time. <laughs> we're 
We, we see four wide on, on this near side. We're, we're going to take another timeout and talk this one over. Now, it's a one-point game. Every play matters, right? Yeah, well, if you're OCL, just line up a wall at the 30 and the 20 and, and make sure that nobody gets past you. We did see the old hook and lateral yeah. last weekend. Yeah, the Pulaski Academy game yeah. last week, yeah. I know our man Bobby would love to see that again if he's at home watching. Yeah. I, you know what? There's something special. The hook and lateral has been around forever, but there's something cool and, and special when you see it executed yep. to perfection because yep. it's just, you don't see it every day, and you know it's always in the bag of tricks, but when, it, when you see it done, it's just like, oh, it's back. I, I love seeing that. Between the hook and ladder, lateral and the uh, scoop and score, those are probably my two favorites. Well, we hadn't seen a scoop and score. We did see a strip and score yes. in the earlier game. Yes, that two-way game. 88-yard return for a touchdown. I don't think we've had a scoop and score. I'm trying to remember. I don't no. remember seeing one. Had one last year Yeah, that sealed the deal for Bryant. Yeah. Let's see what they do right here. This will be interesting. They lined up initially with four wide over on that far side. They're going to do it again. And he moves the pocket the other way. And now he's in trouble and he's just going to go down. Didn't want to make a mistake there. Osceola pressures the quarterback again. Anytime Sipe has held on for very long, Osceola has really made it difficult to throw the football downfield. So we have reached the intermission. And it has been a back and forth battle to say the least. It'll be Osceola taking a 20 to 19 lead into the locker room. Looking across the way there, waiting for Eric Sullivan to catch up with Coach Brooks for our halftime interview. He's got to be happy, that even though he's lost his starting quarterback, his backup is certainly playing well. And we're actually told he's gotten Coach Neil Evans for Harding Academy, so let's go down to Eric. All right, Coach Evans, pretty wild first half there. You guys might have been a little nervous, had a lot of penalties, settled in, got some points. Uh, they lose their quarterback, bring them. You just had a lot going on in this half, but you're only down by one point. Yeah, it just, it just, it was chaotic. I don't know if it was nerves. We certainly were jumpy. Um, you know, and we just, we, we penalized ourselves, and uh, they just had some big plays, and, and we've not been able to limit their big plays, and that's, that's what we got to get fixed at the half. It's hard to coach a team that lives and die by big time plays like they do. What's your message to them this half? Uh, we just got to settle in and be able to run the football effectively, number one, and and, and continue to, to do our job defensively. You know, we've had two breakdowns defensively, and it's cost us. Caden looks a little slow, but he's still be able to re his release is fine, but that ankle does look a little gimpy. Though. Yeah, he, he looks a little slow uh, with his ankle, but we're hoping we can do some stuff with it at the, ha at the half, and hopefully he'll come out. Uh, a little more full speed. Good luck, Coach. Thank you for the time. All right, uh, Scott, we certainly will get the winning coach, Coach Brooks. We kind of got turned around on that wild ending of the first half, and yeah. now we were in this corner here, but we will catch up with OCO here in just a few minutes. No worries, Eric. Thanks very much. Coach Evans told us his number one key to the game when he would talk to us on Monday was limit the deep ball, the big yeah. pass play, but I don't think you realized Littleton would be playing. <laughs> he was the guy delivering the deep ball strike for Osceola in that first half in the absence of MJ Vance. We're going to take a break and be back to War Memorial Stadium in just a moment. I want to know their stories. Here we go. I grew up believing that I could literally be anything I wanted to be. I'm gonna be very legendary. Things ain't never gonna be the same. Prove it. That sounds like fun. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is mind blowing. That's it's incredible. Legendary. Welcome to the program, everyone. That's amazing. Welcome, coming I have chills. It's going to be big this year. Compelling. Powerful. Amazing. Legendary. We are overcoming limitations. I'm all yours. <laughs> yeah. 
441 yards of offense between the two teams in this first half. And Osceola will cling to a one-point lead here at the intermission as we welcome you back into our broadcast booth. 233 total yards for Osceola, 208 for Harding. We also heard uh, Coach Evans there at the half, RJ, talk about being able to run the football better. They have five rush yards at halftime. Now, the big reason is Caden Sipe has been sacked four yeah. times. Yeah, and, and, you know, Eric made a great point with that ankle for Sipe, not been really able to run like they have wanted him to, but he did have a couple good runs after they taped it up, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I, I would imagine that in the locker room they'll probably retape it again, tighten it up a little bit so he can run because that's a big part of their offense. Even though he throws it really well, He's got to be able to run it as well for this offense to work like it has all year. We talk about the penalties, and, and Eric talked to Coach Evans about that too. Maybe there were some nerves at the first of this game. He at least acknowledged that they were jittery for whatever reason, and that usually would be chalked up to nerves. They've settled in, but still the penalties kept coming from for both teams. There were a lot of personal fouls. We had a targeting and an, and an ejection. You got to play amped up, but you got to play under control. Yeah, 12 total penalties between both teams. That's a lot of penalties for a half, and and they were warranted. I mean, whether it be a holding or a false start, a targeting, I mean, it's, it's not like they're phantom penalties. And, and uh, they've all been, tar been, you know, penalties that were were righteous, righteously deserved. So yeah. um, I, I would imagine both, that's going to be a message for both teams at the half is you go in and say, hey, guys, we got to play more of a fundamental game. We, we really need to limit our turnovers and, and really and our penalties. And we'll hopefully see that in the second half. Dontaven Littleton. We've got to talk about him. We've been talking about yeah. him in the first half. But, you know, you think about Vance. That was the guy they prepared for, and he was much more of a runner than Littleton yeah. appears to be. He looks like he's mobile, and he did run the football yeah. a little bit, but he's got he's a drop-back passer, too. Well, and it looks like Littleton's – his first mindset is to throw the football. It's, it, yes, I can run. Yes, if, if the play breaks down, I'm going to be able to run it out there. But his first thought is throw it. And we saw, I mean, first play off the, off the bench, he comes out there and throws a bomb and – and a touchdown pass and so uh, it'll be interesting to see how they move forward we haven't heard we do know that vance had to go back to the locker room with some sort of head injury so uh, we'll find out from eric what his status is for the second half we're going to step aside for our portion of the halftime show but stay tuned the aetn halftime show continues next with ed leon the chief operating officer for aetn he's got to look at eight-man football in brinkley and he's going to look at esports those features on the way next right after this. One of the best things about being a community-focused bank like Centennial is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief to chamber of commerce and civic activities, we enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. More information available at myonhunterbank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation. Our people. Our culture. Our history. Our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Welcome inside to Halftime at AETN Studios. I'm Ed Leon. We hope you're enjoying our broadcast of the state football finals from War Memorial Stadium. We've got a packed halftime show for you here today, including a story about a competitive high school sport that is evolving and a story about one that is adapting. Across America, many rural communities are closing down their high school football programs due to a shrinking student population. But in the Arkansas Delta town of Brinkley, they're keeping the football tradition alive by converting to eight-man football. Here is their story.
when you hear the town Brinkley, some people may ask, where is that? Oh, that's the town on the way towards Little Rock. Yet no one really knows what happens in Brinkley. Like, the kids here are really joyful. The teachers, they love the children. But, I mean, people just look at this town, it's just like, oh, there, there is nothing there. There's nobody there that matters. As kids, we just went outside and played. We didn't really have places to go to hang out. Football was, it was important growing up, especially where I lived, because I lived right beside two of my cousins. Like, we was all in a row, just on a dirt road, and we went outside and we just played football all day. We picked up teams and we just played ball till we couldn't play no more. I was teaching at the school that I actually played. I was now coaching on the field that I actually played on. When you've had football, you don't want to see football leave. And when that happened a couple years ago, it was a scare. It was a scare that, I mean, literally hit home. Looking at the towns who've lost their schools, I mean, it's, there's nothing around anymore. You know, and it's, you sit there and you know that's a possibility where you're at. You know, it makes it tough. Just, just seeing that because the schools that are consolidating, they're, they're drying up and they're just, there's not much left there. Numbers dropping, it's always a possibility to lose, lose, a, t lose a team. It just makes it easier to fill the team when you got to put a few less players on the field. You know, eight-man football is going to be, in the next few years, it's going to blow up, and I mean, it's going to get pretty big in the state of Arkansas. Just keep me off the streets, keep me away from the drugs, keep me away from all, just, just keep me away from all the trouble. And I'll tell them how much trouble I'll be in, and uh, tell them what I'd be doing right now if I didn't have sports still. I've been playing with the same people on that field out there since second grade. I mean, so our chemistry is pretty high. Sometimes we may have our ups and downs. Sometimes we may not play like a team player, but I love those guys. I love football. And the fact that we're getting to keep it, it's amazing. Cause like, if we didn't have football, it was, I don't know. I don't know where we would be at. Coach Becker made a good decision when he chose for us to go to a man. They want to win so bad to prove the doubters wrong because a lot of people thought we were going to lose this program. And then once they seen we weren't going to lose it, you still have your naysayers that say, well, eight-man football is not real football. And to prove those people wrong would do something, I think, so great for the athletes. But hey, I can do this. I, I've overcome this obstacle. You know, I brought a championship back to Brinkley. Keep them lights coming on on Friday nights down there because, I mean, you know, that's that's one of the main things I went to eight-man football with or we went to eight-man football for was, you know, because you just, you get a certain feeling once them lights come on on Friday nights that, you know, you don't really ever get that feeling anywhere else, you know, and that's what I want all these kids to, to, to have that feeling. We salute all the eight-man football teams who are keeping the Friday night lights on in their communities. Hey, I want to take this opportunity to tell you about a new membership program uh, that we have here. It's called the AETN Sports Booster Club. And your contribution helps support our broadcast of the state finals, not only in football, but also basketball, baseball, and softball, as well as all the sports stories that you're going to see during the games like the one you just saw on eight-man football. We have two levels of support. The first one is the rookie membership for $35. Uh, it includes your free gift. Uh, we have all these uh, gifts you can choose from here, including the socks, uh, there's mugs, all kinds of things, uh, and the AETN magazine that keeps you looped in on everything happening on Arkansas Public Television. We also have the All-Star membership, and that $60 includes the free gift from the rookie membership, the magazine, and a year of passport which is a membership benefit that allows you to stream all your favorite AETN and PBS programs on demand anytime on any device. So join, please, and help support these broadcasts. It's the AETN Sports Booster Club. 
you can go to aetn.org slash sports, or you can call us at 1-800-662-2386. I'd, I'd say, uh, you know, ask for the blanket. It's a cool thing. All right, I got a news flash for you. Video games are now a competitive sport. Esports or competitive gaming is exploding in popularity. In fact, esports are already part of the extracurricular programs of more than 80 schools across Arkansas. Let's check out how this program may have finally convinced teachers and parents that capturing dragons and flipping sports cars is actually time well spent. In general, esports isn't necessarily playing video games. Video games is recreation. What we're bringing in is a formal, uh, really concept and, and structured, safe, positive environment for students to grow, come together, form new friendships. Esports is a subcategory of gaming as a whole. So gaming really uh, fits a, a wide swath of of different hobbies, different game types, and different things. Esports is bringing the competitive nature of a team-based game. Esports really took off uh, in Arkansas in 2019, in the spring of 2019 with Play Versus. They partnered with the AAA through communications with them. We collaborated and made esports possible to be an official sport in the state of Arkansas. Yeah, eSports is a new space, especially uh, in education. There's a lot of aspects of it that you can pull from a number of different things, some, some traditional sports and some maybe not traditional sports um, related. For example, you know, we love the inclusiveness of eSports and having a co-ed team with females and males playing together. It, uh, it definitely provides a lot of financial opportunities for college, for students, and it builds a culture at the school that Students that aren't involved in other things and maybe don't have a place to be, now they have an opportunity to be a part of something. So being a part of eSports, my parents are just glad that it has a lot of scholarship opportunities and it does give me a leeway into certain colleges unlike other people. It's just another activity at school, just like football or soccer or any other club. I have raised my GPA a lot this year to be able to get those extra scholarship opportunities that this program has to offer. The majority of the stories that we hear is that students are bringing up uh, their attendance and their GPA to be a part of the program knowing that that's a requirement at the school level. It's not just about the specific gameplay that is a factor, but the main thing is about the connections I can make with the people that also play the game. If the school didn't have eSports anymore, I feel like that would be a low blow. It, uh, it definitely provides a lot of financial opportunities for college, for students, and it builds a culture at the school that students that aren't involved in other things and maybe don't have a place to be, now they have an opportunity to be a part of something. The thing I love like, about playing these games is it just brings me to like meet new people, communicate with people that I like, wouldn't ever imagine communicating with. And it's made me a lot happier going to school, knowing that I have something to do after school that I really enjoy. So some of the best stories come directly from parents or coaches that reach back out to us to let us know the impact that eSports has had on some of their uh, students. And when we hear about uh, you know, a student that um, maybe didn't have a whole lot going for them or was very introverted and shy, but they get into that competitive environment and become a team captain and start you know, describing to the team what they need to do and get really involved, you're getting those, those excellent skills that you'll need all through life. And uh, those types of stories are what uh, really help push a day-to-day -day, you know, work ethic for me. Victory! The video game industry is projected to take in $1 billion this year. Let's work on turning some of that revenue into scholarships. That's it for us. Thank you for joining us here on the Halftime Show on AETN, your home for the Arkansas State Football Finals. I'm Ed Leon. Let's send it back out to War Memorial Stadium for the second half. Did Ed say one billion dollars? Wow, I'm that's getting, amazing. I'm getting in on e-gaming after this is over with. OCOLA leads by a point at the half. It is time once again 
to honor our 2019 scholar athletes. And we'll start with Harding Academy in 3A. It is Stone Sheffield. He's the starting running back. We've seen him on the field plenty in that first half. He's got a 4.0 GPA, and he is planning to study business and art and design. And for Osceola, our 2019 scholar athlete is Jacob O'Kane. Offensive tackle, defensive end, punter, kicker. He does a little bit of everything. 3.2 GPA, his field of study, technology, engineering. Congratulations, and we are glad to honor both Jacob and Stone. I don't think Jacob's going to have to worry about an e-gaming scholarship. He seems pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. Yes. All right, it's been a back-and-forth game. Time to take a look at some halftime statistics. And we talked a little bit about this, 400 and 41 total yards between the two teams. Both teams able to be efficient offensively. However, you saw those rushing yards, only five for Harding Academy due in large part because Caden Sype was sacked four times. Turnover's really not much of an issue in this game. Nobody has a clear edge there, but really it's the penalties. Six for Osceola, six for Harding Academy, and really those can be just as detrimental as a turnover. They can kill drives. Yeah, they, they can. And uh, you saw where it was the detriment of Harding Academy with all the penalties to start the game. Didn't really score any points in the first quarter and really settled down. But uh, I think really the, the big number in this game, and, and we kind of knew this, but with Sight being hurt, only five rushing yards for Harding Academy. Now, granted, as we said before the break, there's a lot of sacks involved that take that total number down. But... Uh, as a team, only five total rushing yards. I would imagine they're going to try to get that running game going a little bit more here in the second half. And Littleton came off the bench for Osceola, four of six for 94 yards, a couple of touchdowns as we take a look at the early highlights. And Osceola got it done first on the ground. This was that big, long 62-yard run to get the Seminoles in front. Yeah, and really this is uh, that's, that's how they've done a lot of it is with the running game. And uh, then here's Harding Academy getting it rolling with their first score, then their second score to take the lead. Osceola bouncing right back, and boy, that was a big injury right there to MJ Vance. He bounced his head off the turf. And then, but here comes Littleton. Littleton comes in, big ball, going for the end zone, touchdown. Osceola, they take the lead, and that was right off the bench. And here comes Harding Academy. That was a great first half, and I believe Eric Sullivan is on the field right now with Osceola head coach, Coach Hooks. All right, Coach, uh, this has been an interesting game to say the least. You've had to deal with a lot of adversity. Your quarterback went down. Littleton comes in, gives you a spark, and you've got the lead 20 to 19. you got to feel good about that, even though you've lost uh, some players to injury. Yes, uh, very uh, unfortunate events that just took place. But, hey, you know, we, we talk about it all, every day, next man up. And that, that's that's our mentality right now. We can't, we can't uh, whine about what happened. Next guy has to come up and make a play. I thought both teams, like uh, you guys, really got to the quarterback of Harding Academy early. They made some adjustments, and uh, you guys were able to get some offense rolling. So you've all kind of had to have that coaching thinking cap on this game, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I mean, hey, it's, it's, it's a chess match. It's, it's a game of runs, and, and uh, right now I think that uh, we're, we're on to something. The thing is we just we can't get, take negative plays. In the first half, we took too many negative plays. You know, you always want to have positive plays. If we can stay positive and move the chains, we'll, we'll be okay. Coach, good luck to the second half, man. Thank you. All right, uh, Scott and uh, RJ, I do want to mention, uh, Coach told me off air, MJ Vance has been cleared to play, uh, but he's really very skeptical. You know, obviously he's going to put his, uh, his kids' players' health first, but he has been cleared, so we'll kind of keep an eye on that. But with the way Littleton was playing, it looks like they found something in that, no doubt about it, with the 2019 lead. All right, Eric, lots of storylines to follow as we get this second half underway. I said a moment ago before we came back on the air, you know, you, you kind of get a feel after watching the first half of most of these games that, boy, this team's kind of got the edge. They're kind of controlling the line of scrimmage or they're making bigger plays or they've got it rolling and the other team's just turning the ball over too much. You kind of get it in your mind, this team's probably going to win the game, or you think that, right? Yeah. Doesn't always turn out that way, but you got to feel – got no clue. I have no clue right now. Who's that's gonna a good win this thing, though. Game. Oh that, yeah, that's a great thing yes. because of the fact that you got a competitive football game, and so uh, glad that we can end the uh, 2019 high school football season with a game like this. Hey, real quick before we get going, I got to give a shout out to my guys at Killing Time Hunting Club. Right now, they've got about eight dudes sitting around the TV watching this 3A game, and they're excited about it. So uh, they went on a big duck hunt this morning, and uh, they are now watching. Uh, they've watched all the state championships. Uh, right here on ATN Sports. So everybody, what a name, Killing Time yeah. Duck Hunt. 
Duck, uh, duck club, hunting club. Was that the North Little Rock football team over there? You that, said a bunch of dudes. Well, no, no, that was uh, that was that was not uh, that my, my, not that kind of dude. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Yeah. Killing time hunting club features um, my buddy Billy Elmore, who's the West Memphis head coach. So he's over there hanging out watching games. I feel like I have to explain that a little because you weren't on that broadcast. Buck James, in his halftime interview told Eric, he said, ask about the pressure North Little Rock was creating. And he said, no, the reason is they got a bunch of dudes. Oh, uh, yes. And they got dudes behind yes, dudes, he said. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was yes. where that came okay. from. Okay, I was, I was like, what? I realized when I said it, you weren't yeah. with me for I went that. on that broadcast. Yes. But, uh, yes, no. So, uh, anyways, a lot of folks, you know, we remember if you uh, want to join the conversation and talk about all these games, uh, you can you, you can do so by using the hashtag AETN Sports. And uh, we love interacting with folks that are uh, watching all these state championship games, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, or softball coming up here in the spring. The Harding Academy will get the football first. Love how Jacob O'Kane lays that ball flat on the tee. Did you see that? He's ready to kick off. And he hits the ground ball again, and Harding Academy content to just fall on it. Make sure they maintain possession, and the Wildcats will have excellent field position. Here comes Caden Sipe. Wildcats down by a point. They missed an extra point, and they had a failed two-point conversion. Osceola has had an extra point blocked. So the failed two-point conversion, the only difference right now. And on the end of the round, it's Sheffield. Sheffield down the sidelines. Sheffield may go, and he's tripped up at the five-yard line. How about that for the first play from scrimmage? Dennis Davis, the touchdown-saving tackle for Osceola. Well, just a simple end around that time. There was nothing tricky to it, but it's a great job of that offensive line. Here comes the end around. Got a great block off that with that left tackle, and then he just outran everybody. I mean, it was really all Sheffield once he made the corner and just uh, that last-ditch shoestring tackle. 52 yards for Sheffield, and he takes the ball on first and goal and gets it down to the three. Well, Coach Evans told Eric at the half that they needed to run the football better, so they got a little creative with that first run call, and it paid off. Now they're trying to make it in with points on the board, and Sipe is bottled up. The stop made by Chris Littleton. He loses four. Well, that time, I mean, once again, you're you're playing, you're you're playing your position. You're not over committing that time. And Osceola did a great job, just staying at home and watching what Sipe did, and they were able to come in and, and bring him down. Third down and goal. Sipe to throw, corner of the end zone towards the sidelines, and the pass incomplete in and out of the hands of Ty Duggar. Let's see if they bring the field goal unit on. Sipe's coming off, so it looks like they're going to attempt the field goal here. Ben Sloan is four of six on the year. His longest a 39-yarder, so we know he has some leg strength. This will be a 24-yard attempt. And he nailed it. Harding Academy takes the lead. Boy, you got to feel like they really wanted to get six there with the way that explosive play set them up. But they will settle for recapturing the lead on their first possession in the third quarter. It's 22-20. Wildcats over the Seminoles back in a moment. Fine, there's never a dull moment in this house. Welcome to Downton. Heavens, we are quite a party. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation. Our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. 
find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Harding Academy takes the lead back on their first possession of the third quarter, and Ben Sloan will kick it away. Osceola again, it bears repeating, they have very dangerous return men. Brandon Johnson, an up back, takes it across the 35-yard line, so they didn't kick it deep that time. They'd been kicking, kicking it deep to their return, man. That's a 10-yard return for Johnson. Andrew Miller on the tackle for Harding Academy. Scott, starting on Monday, you can relive all the action and watch all the championship games from the past two weekends at AETN.org backslash sports. Well, Eric told us that MJ Vance was cleared to play, but he is not on the field. It'll be Dontaven Littleton, and I think we expected that with the way he played, and Vance still not 100% at the backup quarterback, the sophomore who did so well, is going to come out firing, but that will be whistled dead before the snap of the football, the flag down. Not only have we had a lot of penalties, they've almost all been pre-snap penalties. Prior to snap, ball start. Against the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. I mean, we've had a, a P.I. in there. We had a couple personal fouls. We had the targeting call, but so many pre-snap yeah. penalties. That's just got to drive a coach crazy. Yeah, you can't have jitters anymore. You're in the second yeah. half, so it's just, you know, just not, not having a focus. Yep. And it's been both teams, both offenses. Yeah. So now it's first and 15. Littleton, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Coleman, just dropped it. You know, that's the second time tonight that we've seen a receiver start looking up field, and I wonder if Eric needs to find out why Coleman's got a different helmet. Well, they, I was just looking behind him on the sideline. Several of them do. It's, it's not just him, but he just seems to be the only one in the field who has it. Well, we'll get to Eric here in a minute after this play, but Coleman's got a different color helmet than everybody else that's on the offense right now. I mean, you want to talk about singling somebody out. <laughs> uh, Cover the guy with the blue helmet. Yeah. Second and 15. They're going to keep it on the ground with Brandon Johnson, and he has nowhere to go. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go check in with Eric. Well, first of all, guys, uh, Osceola doesn't have the budget as some of the programs do around the state of Arkansas, so they uh, do the best they can with what they have, and that's why you're seeing some different colored helmets. And on that first uh, defensive possession for Osceola, Coach Hooks was right there with Littleton. I mean, coaching him, trying to get as many plays in, in his or on his wristband and in his mind uh, to run because what a situation for this sophomore quarterback to now take over for the second half. And our man, uh, M.J. Vance, not even on the sidelines yet, so I don't all think right. we're going to see him tonight, guys. Thank you, Eric, for the update. They've got a gunslinger in there at quarterback now, Littleton. Over the middle, incomplete. Would have been well short of the first down anyway. Well, the uh, umpire was about to make an interception. Hit him right in the chest. A.J. Harris was the intended receiver. But it was thrown way behind him. He had little chance at that. So that was a misfire from Littleton, but his receiver didn't help him out on the play before that. It'll be O'Kane on the punt. Ty Duggar will stand about his own 45-yard line. And again, a pre-snap flag. Nobody moved when the ball was snapped. Another great punt. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Well, these penalties, Scott, are adding up. I mean, and these are just self-inflicted wounds right now.
A high snap gets over the head of O'Kane. He somehow gets the punt away. Great punt. And it made a divot when it hit. A short roll inside the 40-yard line. How about that under high duress, a 35-yard punt? Yeah, that was, that was a great job. You, punt goes over your head. You can pick it up and just kick it away. Great job right there. Hey, I want to say a special thank you to Corky's Barbecue and Ribs, or Ribs and Barbecue, for catering the ATN sports crew here at War Memorial Stadium. They have restaurants in Little Rock and North Little Rock. Two-point Harding Academy lead, and they go back to work trying to get the end around going again this time with Duggar, and he does turn the corner, and then he gets knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line. He gets five. And the stop made by Chris Littleton, the defensive end for Osceola. Robert Hook's telling Eric at the half that thought he had some stuff going. Just had to keep the momentum and not have negative plays. And the negative plays on that last drive came in the form of a penalty. Had two of them on the drive. And now Harding Academy with the quarterback draw. Sight is tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. A good defensive play. Open field tackle by Terrence Marshall. He's a linebacker for Osceola. And it's going to bring up third down. Yeah, that's a great job by Marshall. He overcommitted, but he was able to throw a big paw out there and knock him down and forces a third down. Harding Academy, four of eight on third down in the game. They're going to show blitz and back off. One linebacker did come and the pass in the ground. I believe it might have been deflected again. They have done a good job pressuring Sight, and that's going to force the Wildcats to punt. It's got to, uh, maybe on the next Harding Academy offensive possession, we need to get a shot at the sideline. They've got a, you know how most teams will hold up a, a whiteboard that's got a picture of Taylor Swift on it or something like that, that <laughs> it means something? Yep. Well, they've got in unison guys with these little plastic boards that have something on and they go up one after another it's pretty pretty neat we'll have to get a shot of it here in the next offensive possession ryan fox booming punt that drops right in front of coleman boy that almost hit him and, and one of the harding players even saying i think it did but i don't think it i don't think it actually hit him but it got really too close for comfort yeah. coleman backing away at the last second here, here we go here, here here's these uh these guys I'm talking about. Jennifer Aniston. We, yeah. got a, we got a viper in there. Is that a cat? Uh, or No, that's a panther. No, that's well, a cow. I don't know what right that here? is. Right oh, here? Yeah, that's a cat. I was looking okay. at the black thing. Okay. And uh, But, yeah, no, they go up one after another. I, You know, I, I look, there, there's guys way smarter than me that, that come up with these, <laughs> these ways to call in the plays. But uh, every team's got something different. MJ Vance is back out onto the field. His first snap since leaving with injury to the starting quarterback back out there, and he goes right back to work, firing it over to Greg Hooks, Jr., and Jr. works his way upfield over the 25-yard line. That's a good gain on first down. So MJ Vance returns to the game. That's a good sign for Osceola fans. Yeah, you see him back in the ball game, and, uh, you know, and I would, I would be shocked, Scott, if, if you see a lot of running plays with Vance, you know, Keep him in there to throw the ball around. But, you know, as Eric said, he, he has been cleared to play. So, if you're cleared to play, you ought to be able to do everything. Another false start against the Seminoles. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. My goodness, that is 15 penalty flags in the ball game. And for Osceola, that is their ninth. I, I don't want to even think it, much less say it, but I'm going to. We may have to dig out the record books before this one's over with. Vance swings it out into the flat. That pass caught by Davis, and he's down at the 23. It's a gain of a yard. And it's going to bring up a third down and about 
six. Braden Oliver on the stop. Nice little juke move right there as he was able to try to get back and get a, get a couple yards on the play. I will say this, that the advantage of having Littleton in the game at your quarterback spot, you know, it's going to give you a little bit more room to run and, and throw with a deep pass, and here comes Vance. Vance goes to the far side of the field. It's scooped up by Coleman. It is caught for the first down. That's a gain of 10. And Osceola keeps the drive alive, stumbling their way to a first down, but they still get to move the sticks. Well, I think, though, that by Vance coming back in this game, it's, it's a morale lifter for this football team. When, you, when your leader goes down, when your quarterback goes down, you know, and even though Littleton was playing well, I think seeing him trot back out there and be able to play is a big thing. Vance with a quick release again on the wide receiver screen. It is caught by Hooks Jr., and he is out of bounds over the 35-yard line right at the 36. It's a three-yard gain, and they'll actually – I think they I thought they said he stayed in bounds, but he is out of bounds. They stop the clock at 641 on the third quarter clock. Four wide outs, press coverage on the outside. Vance off the play fake. Unloads way too high. Overthrown intended for Dan Newsom. Vance hit as he released that one. He still had the strength to get it way upfield. We talked about in the first half. He is a strong football player. Squats 500 pounds, tough to bring down. Looks bigger than his frame suggests. And here comes another penalty marker. This will be the 10th against Osceola. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, third down. You know, they don't. At the high school level, they don't call out the number of who it was. But I, you know, I, I was watching, and I, man, I, and I know we're way up here in the press box, but I, not seeing a whole lot of movement down there on that offensive line. That's the fifth false start penalty in the game against Osceola. Half their penalties are are false starts, and it makes. A third and seven, a third and 12. Vance extends the play, throws over the middle incomplete. It would have been well short of the first. Dan Newson, the intended receiver. He's a little slow to get up, maybe cramping up there on the field. And they will blow the whistle dead, blow the whistle and call for an official's timeout. Let's go down to Eric. Dan Newsom is uh, trying to get stretched out there with the cramping. I also want to bring up that Brandon Johnson, who left the game early in the first half for Osceola, he continues to have major problems with his left ankle. And if y'all noticed on uh, Snipe, he has taken the tape off of his ankle. I talked to some of the folks over there. He got a really nice ice bath there in the half, in the half and his ankle's feeling a lot better, but still a little bit tender, but he did take the tape off, guys. All right, Eric, thanks very much. Something about an ice bath on a cold night in Little Rock doesn't sound too, <laughs> too appealing to me, but if it gets him back out there quicker, then more power to him. Hey, uh, new for 2020, ATN Sports brings you the high school baseball and softball state championships that are in May. Get the latest updates by signing up for alerts at atn.org backslash sports. O'Kane on to punt it away for Osceola. McGahey and Duggar back deep on the punt return team. And boy, another job, good job by O'Kane to get that punt off. He had a guy in his way as he tried to take a couple of steps up to take the punt. He had to adjust. I've never seen a, a punter pump fake to, to punt. Uh, usually you just see the punter go through with it, and he said, well, he's going to come. I'm going to let him run. Oh, no, I'm going to let him run by and now kick it. 
You don't see that very often, but hey, great heads up job by, by the punter for Osceola. So we've had six lead changes in this game. It's been a great back and forth contest. No touchdowns in the second half so far. Harding Academy a field goal on the opening drive of the quarter. The only scoring. Sipe on the toss sweep. Sheffield turns the corner. He's got the first down. He'll be marked out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Chased out by Coleman. Well, that's a great job by that offensive line for Harding Academy. They turned everybody in and really stayed locked to their guy to allow for Sheffield to get a big running lane and pick up the first down. Osceola scored first, take a 7-0 lead. Harding evened it at 7. And then took the lead, but missed the extra point. It was 13-7 at that point, and a botched handoff in the backfield. Seip will have to just fall on it for a loss on the play of two yards. Osceola took the lead back 14-13. Harding led 19-14, and then just before half, Osceola, backup quarterback Littleton, found Dan Newsom to make it 20-19 at the break, and now 22-20. Second and 12. Sipe throws high, but the pass is caught at the 48-yard line by Ty Duggar, and he's out of bounds, short of the first down at the 42-yard line of Osceola, Dan Newsom will the stop. Well, third down and one is much more manageable than third down and 12. And, uh, you know, if, if you're Harding Academy, this is a perfect situation for Sipe to be able to you know, take it himself and run with it a little bit. Running with that gimpy ankle and a nice move by the running back, Sheffield, to get outside on the play, and he's still on his feet inside the 25-yard line. Big run again by Sheffield. Jabari Person will get credit for the stop. Harding Academy on the move again. You know, he was the one that had the big 50-yard-plus run on the first play from scrimmage of the third quarter. He just got 17 more. Wildcats right back up onto the football and going right back to Sheffield. Sheffield to the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats, 24 yards. You know, Scott, I, I told you, as we were coming out of the halftime break, one of the keys for Harding Academy to get their offense rolling was get the running game going. They had five yards of rushing in, at the half, and you can see that they've made an emphasis, an emphasis of that here in the second half. Sheffield's been more involved. They, they've come with jet sweeps. They've come with dive plays. They've come with counters, and that time Sheffield takes it in for the touchdown. Back-to-back -back carries for 31 yards for Sheffield to get it into the end zone, and Harding Academy Leads it by nine. And you can hear the Wildcat faithful down below us here on the home side. Five plays, 63 yards a minute. 21 was that drive for Harding Academy. Now, you know, with that score, it's a two-score game now because even with the two-point conversion, you only get eight out of the deal. So it's now a two-score game for Osceola to try to jump back in this one. Yeah, this is the largest lead either team has had. Yeah. Nobody's led by two scores up until this point. That's how tight of a contest we've had. Harding Academy with a long tradition. Coach Evans told us those guys see the trophies in the trophy case when they walk around at the school. Six state championships dating all the way back to 1976. They won in 76, 77, 83, and 02 as a 2A school, and then in 12 and 15 as a 3A school. Well, you, you talk about momentum throughout a game. Harding Academy comes with the onside kick right there, Scott, and tried to, to maintain the momentum and, and keep, the, you know, keep it on their side, and now Osceola recovers, and they're right at midfield. Coach Hooks has done this quite frequently during the game, keeping his team huddle up on the sidelines and bringing the play in from the sidelines. Play clock now at eight and under. 
as they get lined up on the ball and they go back to Littleton at quarterback. Shot uh, the game clock is it or play clock rather is at two, and I think Coach Hooks may have called a timeout before the snap. He indeed did. Come out. OCL. First time out of the half. Thought he got it off, you know, without having called that timeout. Either way. It, it, you never want to say it's a must must score opportunity, but I really think that you don't want to you don't want to let this lead get too far. You really need a score right here if you're Osceola to, to to maintain step for step with what Harding Academy is doing. Well, I think at the very least you need to sustain something here. Yeah. You don't want to give the football back to Harding Academy because they've got all the momentum, and Osceola's just had trouble sustaining a drive here in this second half. Let's check out what Eric has for us on the sidelines. Eric. Imagine, guys, the coaching staff extremely fired up about Stone Sheffield really getting going and getting that running game going. But on the sideline, you know who gets the credit. It's that offensive line. Let's give them guys some props as well as all the coaches going around, giving those guys high fives if they've uh, really got that running game going on the last possession. Now, yep, that was the emphasis at halftime. Littleton swings it to the wide receiver and then the throwback to Littleton. And Littleton gets stuck, but not before he has first down yardage. That's a good play for Osceola. Good form tackle by Isaac Miller as well, but Littleton's going to get a 17-yard gain on the throwback. Uh, you see right here, little, little works to the left side. Back to him. Nice catch by Littleton to, to be able to get that when it was thrown out in front of him, but I want to try to avoid that linebacker next time. <laughs> it was A.J. Harris with the pass, and now Harding Academy, I believe, has called timeout. And Neil Evans is going to talk to our referee, Travis Douglas. I think they, they may be looking to see if that was a forward pass that Littleton threw over to the wide receiver. I think that's what they may be looking at. I, Here we go. I can't confirm that, but it kind of, that was my first indication whenever I saw the pass. I was like, that looked like it was kind of forward. Previous play is under review by Coach Challen. This is a coach's challenge, so the way that works is he takes a timeout to challenge it. If Coach Evans wins the challenge, he won't learn lose the timeout. If he loses the challenge, the timeout is lost. Watch here. here. Here's Littleton, and that, that ball is clearly forward. Uh, yeah. it, it, he's standing behind, what was that? Uh, I, I guess that was the 45-yard the line. and So we'll see. I mean, the, look, uh, Look, I've already been scolded once because I didn't get the booth reviews right, <laughs> so we'll we'll let them make the official call. But in the meantime, I'll tell you that AETN is proud to bring you the high school football state finals live, and we'll be, we will be back in March with the basketball finals, and in May, we've got the baseball and softball state finals. So expanding the live sporting events on AETN Sports. Well, Eric is our sideline reporter, but sometimes he doesn't stay on the sidelines. Let's go down and check in and see where he is. Over here, now we talked a lot about uh, the two teams from the uh, city of Searcy, and of course it's Wildcats time right now. But how about this, some Searcy Lions uh, in the crowd tonight. Are you uh, still kind of uh, celebrating, man? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. It's going to last for a while, isn't it? It's going to last forever. Uh, be honest, do you guys, I mean, y'all really support each other, both teams, uh, Hard Harding Academy and Searcy. I mean, you're in the same town. Yeah, we are. We, we try our best to support each other. Did you guys, we're some uh, Wildcat fans. Or, or did you support Cersei last night? Of course I did. Everybody gets along, guys, hey, in the uh, city of Cersei. How about that? Eric, ask if they're going to be in the parade on Monday night. <laughs> Monday night. Yes, Monday night. Ask if they're going to be in the parade on Monday night. In the what? In the Christmas parade in Cersei on Monday night. They're celebrating uh, both teams in Cersei. Y'all going to the parade tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Not yeah, tomorrow. I don't think it's that big a deal. It's not tomorrow. So, or Monday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I think they're worried about football right no, now. No, Eric, it, it is a big deal because we've gotten a lot of te text about it. it it's well, actually no, it's you, not to these guys because yeah. they're probably not going to yeah, be there. Clearly, clearly Eric Manning in the stands, not, not a big deal to him. But is it, yes. is it Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday? It's, it, it's Monday okay. right. is, what, is what I've been texting. I've had, I've had four texts that the, the Christmas parade Monday. is on Monday. Monday and And Cersei. they're going to be celebrating both Harding Academy and Cersei in the Christmas parade. Well, they're taking a really long look at this. I don't know if we can put up another replay. They're obviously looking at some of AETN's replays as well. But they're trying to decide if on the throwback the first pass was a forward pass rather than a lateral or backwards pass because you can only make one forward pass. He sees. It looks like it is to me. 
I mean, it's, it's close, but I think it's a forward pass. Just based on where he was standing when he threw the football and where it was caught, just on that camera angle, it, yeah. it looks that way. Now, you know, we Again, only it's have the angle. It's the angle yeah. of, of, of how the ball is. And so, um, I, once again, I let's look at it one more time. And, and you see Littleton right here. But it doesn't matter where he receives the ball. Here, where, where he releases it yeah. is at least a half a yard behind. And, and he, the catch is made right at the 45-yard line. And normally, if it's a backwards pass, he's going to catch it behind him. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Or, or at least be, be back behind the quarterback's positioning a, a yard or two yeah. to, be that, to be a lateral pass. That's my thought on that. So you're either going to catch it behind you or you're going to be back a couple yards to catch it in front of you. Here's the explanation. After review, the ruling on the field of, of a legal forward pass on the second pass is reversed. We need to reset the chains to first and 10 from the 49. The penalty was from the 42. It'll be a five yard penalty. Loss it out. Be second down. Yeah, there's a lot to work to do because the chains had already yes. been moved. So they've got to go back to the original line of scrimmage and set that up as first and 10. But it won't be, it'll be first and more than that because they'll mark off the penalty. Yeah, and, and the one good thing about for Harding Academy, they're not going to lose the time out of the deal because yeah. they, got, they yeah. won the challenge. So Harding Academy is going to re—they're going to keep that time out. Well, they got it right, that's for sure. And just for Bobby Swafford, RJ and I got it right. Yeah, we got that one right. Lost it down. Take it down. I want to remind everybody that starting on Monday, you can relive all the action and watch all the championship games at AETN.org backslash sports. So the line to gain now is the 41-yard line of Harding Academy. Well, now the, uh, the officiating crew's kind of gotten together and and another little powwow. Well, it is a loss of down, so it'll be second down, and it's second down at 22. We need a quarterback. And here comes Littleton bringing the play in from the sidelines. Quick snap. Littleton, all day, throws it to the safety valve. That's Coleman. And Coleman is knocked out of bounds shy of the original line of scrimmage. But this does give you an opportunity to get the first down. Isaac Miller will get credited for the stop. Well, I mean, this sets you up to where you've got a third down and manageable. I, I say manageable. I mean, it's still third and long, but a little bit less than what they had. Well, you may be looking at, two, at four down territory yeah. here, too, so you just get about half of it on this play. Littleton scrambling. Now he's going to keep it. Still looks like he may try to throw it, but he's going to be run out of bounds for no gain. That may change the way you look at this. Fourth down and 14 coming up for Osceola. They may punt it. Well, if, if anything, you've got a quarterback in Littleton that you know, he's good with the deep pass, and you just got to make sure that your your receivers get to, get to the marker at least. Uh, you you got to run your route to the marker to be able to pick up the first down. Well, your defense just gave up a touchdown to Harding Academy. You're running the risk here of giving them the football in plus territory, but Osceola is going to go. Littleton over the middle. He's got a wide open receiver, and he missed him. Wow. Intended for Dan Newson, and that would have been a touchdown. Well, and the the, the corner that time for Harding Academy, Connor McGehe, he fell down. Or excuse me, it wasn't McGehe. It was actually uh, Isaac Miller, who fell down, and uh, you had a wide open receiver, and he's got a little antsy and overthrew the wide receiver. And the Wildcats will take over at the 44-yard line of Osceola.
toss sweep again to Sheffield. Sheffield has really had some success with this play, and he has more. Spinning out a tackle, still on his feet. Heads to the sidelines and knocked out of bounds at the 11-yard line by Greg Hux, Jr. It's a 33-yard run. It's been the Stone Sheffield show here in the third quarter. I tell you what, we've seen some plays in this game, had we? I mean, look at this. Sheffield, whoop, yeah, I'm in trouble there. I'm going to bounce out of that one and get pushed out of bounds. And we've got to imagine that a flag on the play. Really? Yeah. It's another pre-snap flag. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. I don't know that I've ever seen as many false starts a lot. as I've seen in this game. There's been 18 penalties between the two, two teams so far. First and 15. Sipe, you bet. Why not? Sheffield to the five. <laughs> 11 more for the Harding Academy running back. And that puts Stone Sheffield over 100 yards rushing for the for the game. And, and think about this. And we had five at halftime. This time, Sype will keep it. Lowers his head. Gets close to the goal line. He's just shy of the score. It's a five-yard run for the quarterback, Caden Sype. Coleman on the stop for Osceola. But the Wildcats are on the doorstep. Well, they've gone tempo and, and really going at a really fast pace. Sipe on the keeper. Touchdown. A steady dose of Stone Sheffield and then the quarterback RPO game. Yeah, that's just a great job knowing the situation and being able to Sidestep the defender and get in the end zone for the touchdown. Ben Sloan attempting to tack on the extra point. And this thing's been opened up. Yeah, it's, they've opened it wide open and didn't think this was going to happen here. The way that how competitive the first half has been. and uh, It's just the defense for Harding Academy has really stepped up to the challenge here in the second half, and, and they've stopped OCO on everything they've tried. And so, uh, now, but here's the thing: you got 3:28 in the third quarter. Oh yeah, there's a lot of time. And there's left. a lot of time, and we know Osceola has got a great defense. So, you, know, you just gotta you gotta take it play by play and and go from there. By the way, we got some uh, officials that are watching us on AETN. My buddy Eddie Enlow, who uh, officiated last night's game, and. Uh, he, uh, he said he was screaming forward pass on the replay. He said, you guys didn't even need to go to replay before he, he was screaming replay. <laughs> it was a forward pass. So uh, glad to have Eddie watching on AETN Sports. Well, that's why they utilized replay for this yes. first time ever. History in the making here. And I think it's been a very effective tool here in all these championship games. Some of them have been obvious when they looked at it, where we had the kid that didn't step out of bounds. He was called out of bounds in that first game. Some of them have been a a little bit more difficult to determine, but they got it right. So Sloan to kick off. Tried the onside kick a moment ago. This time he's going to kick it deep. Coleman bobbles it. Still can't reel it in, and Harding Academy's on it. I tell you, Scott, when it rains, it pours. And Jeffrey Mercer with the fumble recovery. And Mercer, it, it just it hit in his bread basket. He didn't look it in, and, and he couldn't get on top of it. Osceola's going to call a timeout here as their defense has to get right back on the field. Tried to pick it up there instead of fall on it. And that was the undoing for Coleman. Well, Scott, uh, it's an interesting turn of events. And while we wait on the timeout, I'll tell you that you can join the AETN Sports Booster Club at the rookie level for only $35. 
or the All-Star level, which includes AETN Passport, on-demand streaming for only $60. Sign up today at AETN.org backslash sports. Only 29 yards of offense for Osceola in the third quarter. And Harding Academy has found their running game. That's really been the difference in the third quarter. Five yards rushing at halftime. And now they have 103. Most of them from number five. First and 10 in the red zone. It'll be a quarterback keeper. Another flag comes in from behind. We're going to get our 19th penalty of the game. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Still first down. And those are accepted penalties, by the way. 19. Uh, we had a couple that were declined, so. Yeah, that's right. Now that backs up Harding Academy to the 25-yard line. I want to make a, uh, have the folks over at AETN make a penalty tracker that just sits in the upper right-hand corner and it's just a ticker. <laughs> it would be moving like the national yeah. debt tracker. Yes. <laughs> Sipe, looking end zone. Almost an incredible catch by Carter Neal. But he couldn't reel it in. I'm sorry, was that Miller or Neal? Yeah, Carter Neal. And Greg Hooks Jr. in the coverage. Well, and, hey, that's a great job breaking it up last minute. Hooks was able to go up there and just bat it away at the very last minute. Almost had the catch, and Hooks came in there and just, nah, not today. That was almost a heck of a catch. Second down and 17. Sipe off his back foot and overthrew his intended receiver, Ty Duggar. You know, sometimes when he throws the football, initially you look at it and say, oh, he, he way overthrew his wide receiver. Sometimes he does, but other times the receiver just runs right up underneath it and makes it look like a great play. And how big was this penalty on this drive? It got him away from the run game. Yeah. Got behind the sticks. Of course, the drive's not over yet, but third and long coming up. They've been most efficient with the ground game. Got behind the sticks, went to the air, got two incompletions, and now we'll see what they come up with on third down and 17. And another flag. Delay a game. Play clock right now. Prior to snap, delay a game. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still third down. Let's go down and check in with Eric. Yeah, guys, it's pretty clear. OCO, uh, you can just tell the guys are banged up. They're very cold. It just hasn't been their night. But as you look over that sideline, Scott and RJ, man, Coach Hooks is not going to let them give up. That's why they're back here again. It hasn't really been their night. But uh, you got to commend a team that just keeps on fighting like that. Well, they may be able to get out of this mess because of the Harding Academy penalties. They fumbled the kickoff. Harding Academy had the football inside the 20. And now it's third and a mile. Sight buys time and just throws it away. Well, Sight took a big hit in that play. And um, so now it brings up fourth down. And here's the thing, Scott. If you're in that area, might as well just keep the offense out there. And you, unless you take a delay of game penalty and back it up to, to give your punter some room to yeah. punt. Yeah, punt does you no good where you're at right now on the 30-yard line. I mean, what's one more penalty, right? Yeah, I think you try to dump it off, maybe something underneath. Yeah. And see if your guy can go get it. Blitz is coming. Sight being chased, and down he goes. 
He did not get rid of the football. And Osceola will take over on downs. Terrence Marshall with the sack. And Osceola gets to the quarterback again. Well, that's probably not what you exactly what you had drawn up. Nine-yard loss. And now Osceola's going to have great field position at the 39-yard line. Fifth sack of the night for the Seminoles defense. That's the first here in the second half. New life for the Knowles, down 16. We're still in the third. How long has this third quarter been? It seems like it's been an hour. <laughs> I, I tell you, maybe we should have a ticker on how long each quarter is. Oh, my goodness. Back at quarterback is Littleton. He flips it out complete. The short pass reeled in by Newsom. That's a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. You know, we could do, if uh, you want to for the fourth quarter, we could do an over-under on penalty flags for the fourth, just for the fourth quarter. Might have added a little, little excitement to the fourth quarter. I, I would really wonder what the state record is. Yeah, for, no, I for, agree. For combined... Penalties. You know, Derek Walter is our, our media guru for the AAA. We'll get him to do that for us. Quarterback keeper Littleton with big room to run. He's got the first down across the midfield line. And Osceola's got something going. Jeffrey Mercer makes the stop. We're seeing the mobility now of Littleton. He was the gunslinger when he came on in relief of MJ Vance in the first half, and now he's carrying the football a bit. Jonathan Stovall is into the game at running back. Littleton digs out this low snap, and he gets out of trouble. And he gets out of bounds close to the 40-yard line. You gotta love the fight of that kid, man. He, he's not giving up. He, he's. He's fighting for every yard that he can, and, and that was just, that's true heart right there, man. He, he had three guys, look, he evades and avoids and rolls, and, and you know, I think the Osceola fans are wanting a helmet to helmet. Boy, that, that kid was rolling. Play clock is down to five. They're not gonna get this off, I don't think. We'll see. One second, he does get it off, and he throws an interception. Picked off right into the hands of the defender, and he may get all the way down the sidelines. It's a pick six. Ty Duggar, 63 yards. Boy, Ty Duggar has done everything tonight, hasn't he? Uh, you look, he steps right in front of that pass, shakes off. The wide receiver is going to be off to the races. Got one man to beat. Nope. Not going to do it. I'm going to walk into the end zone for the touchdown. 63-yard interception right there for Ty Duggar. Ben Sloan to make it a 23-point. Harding Academy lead. And the Wildcats starting to smell another state championship. Scott, here's a quick programming note. AETN addresses consumer fraud in the one-hour special, Fighting Fraud and Scams, Monday, December 16th at 7 p.m. only on AETN. And I think I'll be watching that one. That's uh, I always I love those investigative shows. You know, Jason Peterson, whenever he used to do that for KTV yeah, and way you guys, back when, way yes. back when, Boy, I, last I, month. Yes, <laughs> I, tell you, I used to get into that yeah. stuff. So I, I will yeah. be watching the Consumer Affairs yeah. uh, report on AETN on the 16th. Well, that's got to be a really demoralizing series of events for that Osceola sideline. They had something going, too. They, they were moving the football. They were in plus territory, really an ill-advised throw by your backup sophomore quarterback. He kind of let it go without almost even really looking. 
Coleman back deep to return. These guys are good at returning kicks. They haven't broken one today. And they won't hear. Well, it's been an interesting dilemma for Coach Hooks. You, you had your quarterback injured in the first half. You brought in Littleton. You had a very aggressive play call. It worked out well for you. He throws a touchdown, has thrown two in the game. You've seen him go back and forth. He's, Vance was cleared to play at halftime. He's run a couple of series. You have both available. Who do you go with? It's a tough call. Yeah. I, you know, Vance has been the guy throughout the year that got you to this point, but it, it seems like the guy, the guy with the hotter hand right now, even though he just threw an interception, is Littleton. Let's check in with Eric. Yeah, guys, uh, MJ Vance, I'm watching him right now from the sidelines. His helmet's off. He's got his hands in his pockets. I think he just had too much, uh, took too much um, of a beating tonight by the uh, Wildcats. I don't see him coming back in. You can see him number two on the sideline right now just kind of hanging out. Littleton going deep up the field. Did he catch it? He did. Dan Newsom hauls it in in double coverage, and the gunslinger's back. In between two Harding defenders, it's a 41-yard pickup. And the Knolls in business. Littleton will keep it. Turns on the speed, and he has the first down inside the 20. Well, this changed fast, and it flipped the field quick. And uh, Littleton comes out, and he's, he's running a gun. Looks like we've got an injured Osceola player on that far side. It's Stefan Coleman. Yeah. He tried to get up and shake it off, but he's going to head to the sidelines. Osceola in desperate need of a touchdown to stay in this game. Littleton to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Osceola. It's Newson again. 14 yards. And how about that for a quick answer? I mean, that, they moved down quick, yep. real quick. We'll get the drive summary here momentarily. But, boy, Littleton just drove them right down the field to get that quick score. And, you know, I, Hey, look, dude, still got 18 seconds in the third, but three plays, 72 yards, and 46 seconds. You're not going to see any, any guys not fighting for a championship here. O'Kane is out for the point after. There's all kinds of movement before the snap again. Prior to the snap, Frochman on the defense, mm. half the distance, replay try. So now both teams have double-digit double penalties. It's a 17-point game. You know, if you, you think about going for two now, since you get to be a little bit closer. I get those points. Yeah, it's, that would make it a 15-point game, but you could make it 16, so it's still really a two-score game with the extra points, so yeah. it doesn't really make any difference. You, if you want to go for two, you can chase that in the fourth quarter. Just get your points yeah. now. That's what they'll do. And that's no good. Oh. I thought he was going to say it was good. Look wide left of me. Yeah. Yep. Now keep in mind that you get the nice viewpoint at home. And if, when I forget to look at yeah. it, the, the, the shot is pretty easy to tell between whether it's good or not. But our angle is sometimes hard to see from the midfield line. But that one looked clearly off the mark, and it was. So it remains a 43-26 game with 18 seconds to play until we reached the all-too-elusive fourth quarter. Look at the total yards in this game, Scott. Osceola, 354 yards of total offense. Harding Academy, 368. Passing, 
Osceola 209, Harding Academy 272. Rushing, Osceola 145 to Harding Academy's 96. It's really offense is taking charge here in the second half. Newsom really having trouble. This is the second time he's been on his back, and the official is actually going to give him a little assist That's here. That's what I'm talking about. How about that? That's what I'm talking about. Getting stretched out. Coach Hooks comes out there to check him out now. You know, you don't think about getting cramps when it's cold out. You usually see yeah. that in, in early, the early parts of the football season, in August, September, October a little bit. You don't think about that in December. But they happen. Yeah, and it's yeah. not really a mild night either. I mean, no. it's, it's pretty average temperature-wise. must not brought their pickle juice. 46 degrees. Right now here at War Memorial Stadium, and Newsom going to get a hand reaching his feet again. And by the way, there's nothing worse than having a cramp and then somebody feeding you some pickle juice. I'm not, uh, <laughs> not a big fan of pickles, anyways. But Harding Academy has outscored Osceola 24 to 6 in this third quarter. But the Seminoles trying to steal the momentum with that last touchdown. Artem Academy will try to return it this time. Aaron Chisholm on the return. He gets six yards. It'll be marked down at the 45-yard line. And Harding Academy will go back to work. Scott, I really think that we've been at almost the 45-minute mark here in the third quarter. Another flag. I think we had too many men on the field. Legal substitution against the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And you know what's crazy, Scott, is that these aren't judgment plays these officials are throwing these penalties. No, it's no. like things that they have to throw penalty flags on. You can tell they don't want to throw yes. them anymore. I mean, it's not like they're they're out there throwing PIs. <laughs> and, and they, it's like things you have to throw penalty flags for. Yeah. First and five. Off the RPO game at Sheffield. This has been the most efficient Harding Academy has been, is giving the ball to number five. It's a five-yard gain. Right at the first down yard marker. Three seconds left to play in the third quarter, and they're going to stop the clock for a measurement. Of course. They don't want to get out of the third quarter. Well, now it goes to oh, zero. I guess they're not going to. The clock had stopped, so I thought they'd called yeah. for a measurement, but apparently they're not going to. So we have reached the end of the third quarter. We will go to the fourth at War Memorial in just a moment. As time passes and the years go by, change is something we all experience. But no matter how the world changes from year to year, the one thing that will never change is the true meaning of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. A 62-minute third quarter in the 3A state championship, and we begin the final 12 minutes with Harding Academy leading Osceola 43-26. to On first and 10 toss sweep, Sheffield. Boy, they really opened it up, but that time he's tripped up before he really got ahead of steam. It's a gain of only four. You want to try to match a fourth quarter with a 63 minute? Now, why would quarter? we want to do I'm that? I'm just saying, you don't want the champion. Listen, you, you want football season to really if, end? If we could do it with no penalties, yeah, I'm for okay, it. Okay, there you go. I'm for it. 22 total penalties in this game. And that was a, in large part the reason for a 62 minute quarter. Pistol formation. Play clock is under 10. On the RPO game, Sipe tries the middle, and there's not much there. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Tackle by Javion Wiley. Hey, fans, we've been hearing from you throughout the entire state championships, and we want to hear from you some more as we enter the fourth quarter. Share your thoughts at AETN Sports and connect with us at AETN.org backslash sports. Harding Academy is 5 of 11 on third down tonight. Outscored Osceola 24 to 6 in the third quarter. That pass is caught by Duggar. And Duggar has the first down, down to the Osceola 31-yard line. It's a gain of 10. The tackle is made by Anthony Harris. Sipe will keep it. He throws it the last minute. A flag comes down. Now, he may have been past the line of scrimmage, but I believe the flag was thrown before he threw the football, so this infraction is not going to be that, I don't think. I don't think the umpire would, would throw that anyways. No, he's not lined up on the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty spot of the foul. Still third down. And the beat goes on. You know, we were just talking about uh, folks connecting with AETN Sports on social media or whatever. Just found out that uh, Virginia Grigsby from Missouri, she's actually tuned into AETN watching the high school. Uh, somebody from Missouri nice. watching the high school state championships here in Arkansas. Fantastic. So we'll replay first down. Cats need to get to the 21 to move the chains. Sipe has time to survey, and then he throws an interception. Nope, they'll call it incomplete. Have to see the replay on that one, just because he Coleman. tried. He says that he got his hands underneath it. Coleman pleads his case. It was ruled incomplete on the field, and they all point to the replay monitor. Here, let's we'll and take they the bounce look. up and down when they see the replay. Let's take the official look. Oh, that's not a very good angle. Can't tell I, on that well, one. Well, I know, but I think you got it. We'll see it. The other angle is what we need here, but here comes the review. Yep. Needs to replay. Calling DV Sports. The first time is under review. Well, so they'll make the long jog down to the 20-yard line and, and get a look at this one. And, uh... I mean, here's the thing. It's a, it's a big, big turnover, and, and it's a big play. So here it is. He got his hands. Oh, I think he got it. Yeah. Yeah, he got it. That's yeah. an interception. View a little blurry since the camera was panning, but I think he got it too. I'm, I, I think you can even really tell from the angle behind him yeah. that he has the football and that it didn't hit the turf. However, it does have to be inconclusive. What is this or it has to be conclusive, I'm sorry, to overturn it. Is this our third review in this uh, game? I think we've had more than that. No, I'm just talking about in this game. Second or third, one of the two. Either way, 
They've been going good so far. Let's go down to Eric. Yeah, guys, I uh, had a pretty good view of the cat. I think he got underneath it, but what I saw up there, I don't know if the video is going to actually help him here. I think it might hurt him because it's not real clear, but um, I'm just about 15 yards away from it. I think he got his hands under it for the interception, and I wanted to get this in. Coach Evans was not happy at all before this drive as Harding Academy kind of went away from their game. They were running like crazy with Stone, uh, with Stone Sheffield, Shatterfield, but it uh, looks like now they've got the game plan back together. They're milking that clock, the play clock as well, uh, to run the ball more and get, get out of here before you know this thing gets into the 30s when it comes to penalties yeah i think i'm i'm with you on that angle that we just saw and this is the one we saw i really think you may want to go back to the one because of because the blurriness of that i think you want might want now this might be better look right here this is the one we made oh you know, he's going to go behind it uh, of course there would be three guys walking. Yeah. i think the one from behind him even though that's yeah. not the most Efficient angle normally. I think you can tell that his arm is under the football. Here we'll we go. see. This could go either way, in my opinion. It's a call. After review, the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is reversed. It's an interception. Also, Osceola, first and 10, 20 yard line. Well, I think that's the right call. I, yeah. I didn't know they'd make it, but I, it is the right call. I think he, I think he definitely caught it. You're, you're right. That's probably the best. Yeah, because you can see, yeah. right? Yeah, there's no way that that hit the he, ground. Yeah, he wasn't even on the ground. Yeah. Yet. So, well, so it's a turn. That's the first turnover for Harding Academy tonight. They don't do that very much. <laughs> so the Seminoles have new life. Littleton back in at quarterback. Still 10 minutes to play in this 3A championship game. And the Seminoles are down 17, low snap. And Littleton's going to go deep. The big arm unloads upfield, and he connects again with Coleman. Coleman clearly the deep threat for Osceola and Littleton's favorite target. And the Seminoles are in business again. It's a 49-yard pass. And, Scott, that's going to put Littleton over 200 yards passing here in the, for the ball game. I mean, he threw that thing a long yeah. way. First and 10. Littleton to work again. And again, goes towards the sidelines. It's caught out of bounds. Dan Newsom reeled it in, but he was several feet out of bounds. You know how you always hear people say you don't have to get all back in one play? Unless you're little, and, and then <laughs> that's he, the mindset. He said, you know what? We're, we're down big. We're going we're gonna to try to get all this back as quick as we can. That is definitely the sophomore mindset. It's high risk, high reward. He has good protection. Now it breaks down on him, and he had nowhere to go with the football, and he has to eat it. Levi Mercer will sack him. It's a loss of four. The negative plays, that's what Coach Hooks talked about at halftime. Have to eliminate the negative plays, and there's one there. Third and 14. Littleton. Deep ball again, but nobody's home. Nowhere in the vicinity of a receiver. And it's going to be fourth down and 14. Seminoles are 0 for 2 on fourth down tonight. Littleton, to use a baseball analogy, is the cleanup hitter, the home run hitter. He's, yeah. he's either going to hit a home run or strike out. Well, I better get it off because he's got four on the play clock. He does. And again, he's going to the sidelines, and that 
ball is caught, but I believe it's going to be short. Coleman went right to his knees. He gets an incredible spot, though, and I think he's going to have the first down. I, I don't know. He, they move the ball back yep. a little bit. Yep. I, I think it, it's going to be. Are they going to measure this? Let's see here. It's right in front of him. Yeah, I mean, he is he is at the 21 and a half yard line where he goes down. But he put the football down <laughs> inside yeah. the 21. Can't blame the kid for that. So they did move it back, but it's still a pretty nice spot. Oh. But he's going to be short. Wow. Harding Academy takes over on downs. <laughs> That was a heck of an effort, that's for sure, by Osceola as they came up a few inches shy and with 8.40 to play here in the fourth, I imagine you're going to see a heavy, heavy dose of that run game for Harding Academy. Yeah, they can really claim their state title on this drive. Yeah. And really maybe even do it without scoring. If you can, if you can eat three or four minutes off the clock, a 17-point lead will be good enough. They'll start with Sheffield. Number five's had a big second half. And he gets five on first down. Stop made by Anthony Harris. Sheffield over 100 yards for the eighth time this year in his 15th game. They'll flip it to him again. He's got the first down. A flag comes down. We'll see if this one's coming back. It is. Yep. Be a hold against Harding Academy. Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the spot of foul. Still second down. He did. Hey, our official, Travis Douglas, I think he's gotten more face time than Eric tonight. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. So this moves the football back to the 17-yard line. It's going to be second down and 15. The penalty count up to 24 now. Sight flushed out, flings it to a wide open man running in open field to midfield. He got a block and he breaks a tackle. And down the sidelines goes Ty Duggar, touchdown. Well, Scott, I, if he's not your MVP, I don't know who is. I, I mean, the kid has done everything. 83 yards for Duggar. A lot of it after the catch. I mean, Duggar has run the ball tonight. He leads in receiving for Harding Academy with 10 receptions for 209 yards and two touchdowns. He's got two interceptions and a defensive touchdown. Or two defensive touchdowns. Oh, just one. Harding Academy is going to go for two. To try to make this a 51 26 lead. And the play clock under five again. They're going to have to hurry. They didn't get it off, but they do call a timeout. First timeout of the half called by Harding Academy. Well, while we sit through the timeout, I'll tell you that if you're interested about what's next on the great AETN lineup after the football state championship finals, you can visit AETN.org schedule. 
and see what's coming up. You can set your program reminders for the shows that you don't want to miss, and it's all on AETN.org. And don't forget on December the 16th, if you want to chase fraud and watch AETN do it, join me and others in watching the fraud show on AETN December 16th. I'll set my DVR for that one. Ty Duggar, you mentioned that pick six. That was a 63-yard return. This is an 82-yard touchdown as a receiver. And he also has a 21-yard touchdown catch back in the second quarter. Be hard-pressed to vote against him for MVP tonight. Sipe. To the end zone, wide open, and the conversion is good. Sheff, nope, not Sheffield, Miller. Miller caught the two-point conversion pass. It's a 51-26 game. We'll take a break. Harding Academy is rolling. We're back to War Memorial in a moment. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. There is no parallel for this election in 2020. The entire point is to get past the headlines, to get past the name calling. We can go deeper into topics. Everything isn't necessarily red or blue. We need to understand what's going on. We need to go behind the story and under the story. Not just to find out what happened, but why it matters. 2020 will be a political roller coaster, but viewers can count on PBS to be there every step of the way. We said when Harding Academy began that last drive that they could really seal their state championship with it. It looks as if they've done that. 51 to 26 after the touchdown. Didn't really burn the clock. That would no. that, but if you get six. I was gonna say with this game though, I mean anything could happen. Yeah, I mean yeah. Well, you know Littleton's about to yes. unload. Oh yeah. The gunslinger is gonna throw some deep balls. Coleman is back deep to return the kickoff of Sloan. Deepest kickoff of the night by Sloan. Coleman looks for some room. No seam, and he is going to be swarmed under inside the 20-yard line. Harding Academy had that one covered well. It's a 10-yard return. I mean, if you wanted offense, Scott, if you, if you were sitting down tonight as you were – Tucking your kids in, wanted to watch some TV, and you said, hey, you know what, I want to watch an offensive football game. This is one for you. The two teams so far have combined for 886 yards of total offense. Wow. It'll be Littleton at quarterback. He fires over the middle, incomplete. Good coverage by Harding Academy. Davis, the intended receiver, and the coverage by Andrew Miller. I want to take a minute here while we have one to congratulate again all of the state champions. Yes. Been a great couple of weekends at War Memorial. Started last Friday night with Bryant and North Little Rock in a rematch, and the Hornets win it again back to back. That pass caught at the 30 yard line by Greg Hooks Jr., and that's going to be good enough for an Osceola first down. Yeah, it's been, you know, when. You know, you and I, I, I do radio as well as TV, and 
Um, you think, boy, last week it was so far, so long ago when we did the 7A championship and uh, just a lot of good football in between. And uh, Yeah, congratulations to everybody. It was, it was a lot of fun. Lasky Academy in a rematch with Little Rock Christian, crowned state champion again. Congratulations once again to the Bruins. That pass caught by Harris and a flag down on the tackle. And they may get targeting again here. We've already had a targeting call in this game. And an objection of an Osceola player. I'm not so sure we won't get another one here. And that will, if it stands, it will be penalty number 25. I think we need to put old Travis Douglas on payroll. <laughs> Personal foul with targeting on the defense. There results in a player ejection. This play is under review. This is the fourth uh, instant replay of this ball game as well. At least, because both of the targeting yeah. ones were reviewed. Yeah. We had one, we had one on the interception a moment ago. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, yep. that's targeting. Yeah, so right with his head. Yeah. And, and he had helmet to helmet. Yeah, he had his, his, uh, his Isaac Miller's the player, and I mean, his neck was all the way. He yeah. was looking at the ground. Yeah. That one ought to take no time. Let's check in with Eric. All right, Scott, I think he led with the helmet clearly, and you got to hate this. Here's Isaac Miller, just caught that two-point conversion. He's a senior for Harding Academy, and I uh, know he – Never dreamed he'd be getting ejected from this game. We had that scene last year with Bryant and North Little Rock, if you guys remember correctly, uh, when the player got targeting right at the very, very end of the game. So uh, I definitely think he led with the helmet. The player was already on the ground, and uh, these guys, uh, I know they're aggressive. They just got to know they can't have that helmet first. Yeah, I do remember that late in that game. This is late in the game as well, but boy, uh, I mean, yeah, he, he really – Osceola had their best defensive player get knocked out early in this one because yep. of targeting. Yep. I mean, that, whether it's late in the game or begin the game, I mean, it still happens, and you don't want to miss the game. Targeting is confirmed. Player number six is ejected. 15 yards from the, from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, that's tough. Well, just to finish out the list, we don't want to leave anybody out. No. We congratulated Bryant. Pulaski Academy, Searcy. That all happened in the first weekend. And don't forget the parades on Monday. Don't forget the parade is in Searcy on Monday. Fordyce earlier today. And Pula and Joe T. Robinson last night. Yes. I did it without looking. I I'm proud of you. I yeah. Now, I here's the thing that I want to find out before we end this broadcast. Troy Mitchell, who, by the way, is doing all the statistics for uh, all the championships, he also keeps up with the attendance totals. And I, I want to see what the final attendance total is for the entire two weekends to see how many folks came through War Memorial. I actually may get that sooner I than I want. Gonna, yeah, you're going to get I it may right get now. that sooner than I anticipated. I'll give it to you after this. First and 10 from the 43-yard line for Osceola. Mitchell gets out of trouble. And the big arm unloads upfield. It's a 50-50 ball, and it's incomplete. Osceola fans wanted a flag. Okay, you, while, while they make their way back, you want the attendance totals? I'm ready. Okay, so the championship attendance record was set in 2004, and that was 52,686. And for tonight's 3A game, they had 3,143 people attend this ball game for a final total of 49,359 folks have made their way through the turnwells here at uh, War Memorial Stadium. Average attendance was 8,227. The receiver didn't turn around for Mitchell there, and it'll bring up a third down and 10 intended for Davis. By the way, that Searcy game was the second highest attended game. Uh, Searcy and Benton drew 10,722. The wow. Bryant North Little Rock. Brought in 18,361. Wow. Yeah. Well, Cersei brought almost the entire town. Fordyce brought their entire town. Well attended. Good weather, too. I think so many yeah. years 
you're going to have at least one bad, bad day of weather. And this year there weren't any. No rain, wasn't terribly cold. Play clock goes to zero, but they're going to say he got it off. It's a quick strike, and it's caught at the 41-yard line. That's a short gain of two. And the clock will roll closer to six minutes. Sociola not really in a hurry up here. They are going to go for it on fourth down. I think they're going to. I think Osceola is going to call a timeout, and it'll give me a chance to tell you, Scott. Monday's a big day for ATM. You know why? Well, it's going to be a timeout for Osceola, but it's a big day for ATM, and that's because not only do you get to watch a great TV show about frauds and scams on ATM, which is Monday, but you can relive all the championship action on Monday at aetn.org backslash sports. So uh, make sure that if if you're in, uh, whether it be crime scene investigations or or arts or sports, AATN's your place. Okay, Scott's over there digging through the record books. Uh, I, I got to figure out what you what no, you're digging into. I was just looking into the uh, the Burlesworth Award each year too. We haven't really had a chance to mention that. You know, we talk about the MVP and the the champion gets a trophy, but there is also uh, Brandon Burlesworth Award each year at the state championship game, awarded from the Brandon Burlesworth Foundation based on performance during the game, character, and a willingness to put the team first. And the award is given to a player from each team. I just wanted to mention that, that of all the awards that will be presented after the game, that's an important one too. We all remember Brandon Burlesworth, his story, and we always will. And that is tipped in and out of the hands of one receiver and into the hands of Newsom. Newsom will have a first down for Osceola. It went in and out of the hands of Harris. Newsom there to corral it. I wonder when you stat that, do you give like the guy that tipped it up, does he get like a yard or something like that because an assist? I think he's I think he's forgotten. Okay. He's I think a, he's forgotten. He, <laughs> now if he'd caught it and yes. then lateraled it, yes, then, then, he would, then we'd have had something. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> Deep ball to the end zone, and it's thrown too high and out of bounds. Littleton intended for Greg Hooks, Jr. Back-to-back so -back trips for the Seminoles to the state championship. It certainly looks as if both trips are going to be unfruitful. Beaten by Boonville, 35 to nothing last year. In trouble is Littleton, and down he goes. Keaton Chapman. We've called his name a few times tonight. Six foot, 220 pound senior. It's a loss of 10. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Eric. Yeah, Scott and RJ, a couple of things. Uh, you know, you look at Harding Academy here. We A lot of these guys are just juniors, including uh, the good, great quarterback, Mr. Sipe. So uh, big things coming for the Wildcats. And you guys were just talking about Osceola back-to-back -back years here. And, you know, most likely back-to-back -back years they've lost this uh, game. But I, I keep watching Robert Brooks on the opposite sideline here. They got a good one down there at Osceola. And let me tell you, that guy is still coaching. He's still working with his young quarterback. And, uh, that's why he's gotten this far because of his coaching ability, and uh, we don't want to forget the run they had to get here, guys. All right, Eric, thanks very much. It'll be fourth down for the Seminoles. They're out of timeouts, 4.54 on the clock, and you can see they've really almost conceded by the fact that they aren't really in any kind of hurry-up mode. Yeah, nobody is. This game now three hours and 17 minutes old. On fourth down, Littleton flings it off the back foot, and it's out of bounds. Well, you know, we said the last time Harding Academy got the football, they can get a couple first downs, run the ball, and pretty much wind this one down. 
Hope you'll stay with us for the post game. We will have some player interviews and an interview with head coach Neil Evans. As Harding Academy gets set to tote their 10th, I'm sorry, their 7th state championship trophy back to Searcy. Sheffield with good room. He has stood up at about the 43-yard line, maybe the 44 by Dan Newson. It's a gain of 11. It's their 10th state championship appearance, but this will be their 7th trophy. They won it in 76. 77, 83, 02, 12, and 15. You know, you hate it for a team like Osceola. Been here two straight years. And, uh, you know, hey, there's been I've seen teams that have been here four and five years, never won a state championship. But uh, you got to give it up to Harding Academy and what they've done. Hey, they. Uh, they, they made adjustments at halftime and got it done, and, and those uh, adjustments in the second half worked. You know, when we talked to Neil Evans on Monday, I thought one of the interesting things he told us when we were asking him about their tra tradition, he says everybody walks through the halls, they see the trophies, but they also, as we have an injury timeout, they also have a, an interesting setup with that school that they basically funnel kids all the way through the school system from as young as three years old. He said when they have a pep rally, the elementary yeah. school kids are there, right? I mean, yeah. young kids are there yeah. seeing that football tradition displayed. They're at the game, so they, they grow up with it. And that really is a rich tradition there at Harding Academy. Dennis Davis is the injured Osceola Seminole, and he's going to limp his boy. He's in some pain, isn't he? Yeah, he's he may have had that ankle rolled on. But, no, you're right, Scott. I mean, he, he said the second graders show up. Yeah. And uh, come and watch the pep rally, and it's a it's a culture, man. You you've got to if you look at a lot of these people that are a lot of these schools that are successful, it's a culture to them. You know, they 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 incorporate it in from the youngest of ages, and and get them involved with football or get them involved with that, you know everything going on with that school, and you know you, you see success. Cersei is title town in 2019. The Lions won here last Saturday night, and the Wildcats are about to do the same. They're going to have two state championship trophies in that parade on Monday. Hoisting those things as they go down around the square. Are you the grand marshal of that thing? No, I'm just telling you, like I, <laughs> like I literally, guys, I'm not even kidding. Dear, no, no, during this broadcast, I have had, no joke, five to six texts going, hey, the parade's on Monday, so yes. I'm making sure that yes. everybody hears that I, I am talking about the parade on Monday. This must be some parade. Yes. I, may, I may go up and check it out. <laughs> Third down and short. Trying to move the chains, they will. And they may do more than that. Sheffield, a touchdown saving tackle there at about the 35-yard line by Anthony Harris because he was going to be off the races if he was not upended there. It is almost kneel down time. Again, Osceola out of timeouts. They should not have to get another first down. Caden Syke draining that play clock to three before he takes the snap. Sheffield again to the 30-yard line as we go under two minutes now. now this will take, take it down to around 40. Well, as they take that back, it'll be take it lower than that. Take it down to about 20. 120 on the clock. And you can hear the fans of Harding Academy. Finally time to celebrate. It's been building. It's kind of that moment that you have to wait till it's okay to say, yep, this one's finally over. 90 seconds. And the play clock under five again. They're doing a good job of clock management here. Sheffield again, and Sheffield will have the first down inside the 20, and now they can kneel it. First down. 
Great football culture, as we said, in Searcy. One team we didn't mention was the other Harding team. They've got a pretty good football team at Harding yeah. University, too. Yeah. Yeah, they're really good. They were in the NCAA playoffs this year. Sipe taking the play clock down again. And he will go to a knee. He will have to do that once more. Harding Academy out in full force. The fans have come. They've watched their Wildcats. Go a perfect 15-0. And Searcy is title town in 2019. And Coach got the water bucket. He tried to avoid it. He ran all the way out to midfield to, to, to avoid the water bucket. And it, it was going to happen one way or another. First state championship since 2015, seventh overall. Let's go down to Eric. Yeah, guys, I don't know if you saw number 23 who got to come in late for uh, the Harding Academy guys. He is, uh, what I've been told, the uh, favorite player on the team. He broke his arm about three weeks ago, they said, and he got in. That's Drew Hyatt. He got in for the first time. That's where he kind of had the uproar of applause for a young man who doesn't get to play a lot and a really uh, kind of a Rudy moment for that young man. So a pretty cool story. And as uh, we uh, get the handshake done here, guys, I'm going to go find some players to talk to. All right, Eric, thanks very much. We'll get back with you in just a moment. So a 15-0 perfect season for Harding Academy. Robert Hooks and the Osceola Seminoles denied for the second straight year. They'll finish the year 12-2. What a great night. I mean, think about this, Scott. This game was 0-0 zero zero at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. Moving quick. Yeah. And uh, – <laughs> Then the second quarter happened. <laughs> and, and the third uh, quarter. And then the third quarter happened. And uh, then you end up with a 51-26 final score. Almost uh, almost 1,000 yards yeah. of offense between the two schools. Ty Duggar, your pick for MVP probably. I, I don't, oh, no I, doubt. I think it's a no-brainer. No 209 doubt. receiving yards. He had two pass catches for touchdowns, 10 overall receptions. And then, oh, by the way, Reeled in a pick six on the defensive end. A 63-yard interception return for a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, I think Eric's got somebody down on the uh, on the field right now. Yeah, guys, star quarterback Caden Sipes in here. Caden, you kind of rolled that ankle a little bit early on. I think the team may have stumbled a little bit early, maybe a little bit nervous, but y'all really settled in that second half. I think that running game in the third quarter really got you guys going. Oh, yes, sir. In all the close games we've been in, we've come out in the second half, and we've just run the ball really, really well, and that's when our O-line really takes over. All right, you guys got so, so many points you can score, 50. You're a big part of that. How fun has this season been to cap it off with tonight? Oh, it's been so much fun. I mean, we, we just love each other. I mean, We've been working so hard for this. It's everything we've dreamed of for a while. All right, Harding Academy has been known to win some state championships. You guys kind of get your own trophy. A lot of pressure there to keep that winning tradition. Oh, you know, uh, we got a lot of experience. My older brother won a championship. My offensive coordinator won a championship. So, you know, there's just a lot of wisdom to be passed down to me. All right, guys, uh, you're just a junior. Good luck next year, and you guys go have a lot of fun, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Okay. Well, we have more. He is one of the most his most respected uh, player on the campus, according to Harding Academy coach Neil Evans, quarterback Caden Sipe there, and his numbers on the night, 20 of 37, 364 yards passing and three touchdowns. He was sacked five times and threw one interception. Yeah, he, oh, he's a heck of a player, man. I, I, Ty Duggar as well. Hey, they've got a bunch of athletes on this football team. And, uh, they were very impressive. Hey, Wildcat fans, you can now purchase your state championship merchandise online by going to ArkansasHighSchoolSports.com. Image One is the official merchandise provider of the AAA. Remember, ArkansasHighSchoolSports.com, where you can order online to get that Harding Academy Championship T-shirt. Let's go down again and check in with Eric. 
right, we are here with star running back Stone Sheffield. We were asking about you at halftime. You had five yards, and you explode in the second half. What was the message at halftime? Uh, well, you know, we were kind of messing up for a bit, and uh, we kept getting um, penalties and stuff. But uh, after halftime, you know, we just said we had to run the ball. We had to push it, and uh, that's what we did. Oh, you really got this team going with your legs, and you got, of course, Caden kind of settling in there. Uh, once your offense gets going, you all are the state champs, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Talk about what that means for you. Uh, I don't. It, it just means a lot. I mean, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've been playing with these guys for a really long time, and I just love my brother so much, and we we finally made it, so it means a lot. All right, we we got to know, where did Stone come from? Uh, where did I come from? Where, where did that name come from? <laughs> oh well, I was uh I was born in Little Rock, so. <laughs> Little Rock, so I don't know. I like it. I like it, man. Good work there. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't know if it who's the news anchor, Scott, back in the day? Uh, Stone Phillips or something like that? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's Where did right. that come from? All right, guys, we'll, we'll get the uh, MVP, which we all think we know who's going to be, Mr. Duggar and Coach, coming up after the uh, trophy celebration here, guys. All right, they're taking pictures of Osceola, giving them the runner-up trophy, so we are about ready for the, there it is, the championship trophy to Harding Academy. Everybody wants to touch it. Everybody's going to take a picture with it tonight. And everybody's going to see it in the parade on Monday. <laughs> I just had 6 o'clock, by the way. <laughs> Listen, there may be... What was the what was the record for the uh, the two weekends of football? There may be that many people at the Cersei uh, Parade yes. on Monday. I mean, because gonna, you have uh, you have you have built it up, <laughs> unlike any Christmas parade in the history of Christmas parades. <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna go. Oh, I think I'm yes. gonna go. <laughs> there they are, the 2019 3A football champs. We haven't received. Have we received official word on MVP? Yet? I don't think we've gotten official yet. And we could be wrong. I mean, we've been wrong before. Sheffield ended up with 162 yards, by the way, two touchdowns. I just got a word it is going to be Ty Duggar as okay. your MVP. I think that's a good choice. Yes. There they are, the champs. Coach Neil Evans will join us after the break. We'll return to War Memorial in just a moment. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Harding Academy going to give some love to their fans, and we are with head coach Neil Evans down on the field. Here's Eric again. All right, thank you, Scott and uh, Coach Evans. Uh, we'll uh, have our special guest on here in a minute. Uh, really got it going in that third quarter. You mentioned to me that I had to get that running game going, and I tell you what, Stone really did ramp up your offense and get those points on the board. Yeah, absolutely. That was that was a message at the half. the game 
and play as well as he did uh, shows the, the kind of character and the kind of resiliency that, that gets instilled in a program 364 other days and it gets put on display in a night like tonight. And so uh, I tip my hat to them. Uh, there, there's very few, very few football teams uh, in the country that can have a backup quarterback come in and compete the way that guy did. Very impressive. I right, give uh, props to yourself, your, your staff, and your team and your program. A lot of trophies over there at Harding Academy. Now you're part of it, buddy. Yeah, just it's, it's awesome, and it goes to those guys. I mean, I, you know, we coach them, but they have to come out here and make the plays, and, and all the credit goes to them. All the credit goes to the assistant coaches. They work so, so hard, and uh, just – I'm just very, very blessed to, to be surrounded by him. Who's this young lady? This is my daughter, Ava, right here. All right, Ava, who yells at Dad more in the stands, you or Mom? Huh. Uh, probably me. I was on the probably you. Congrats. Go celebrate with your dad. Coach, congratulations. Good job right there. All right, uh, Scott, we will try to get Mr. MVP here real quick, so give me a second, guys. All right, you're putting a little overtime in tonight. I like that. We yes. haven't heard from the MVP yet. Eric's done a great job uh, in all six of these uh, games. We can take a look at some of the final numbers probably. Now, let me grab them real quick while we're waiting on Eric to grab uh, the MVP, Ty Duggar, who finishes with 10 catches, 209 yards, and a couple of touchdowns, plus he had the pick six. How about the team totals here? On your screen, total yards. You talked about all of those. Harding Academy rolls up 522. Osceola, 445 and 314 through the air, but they're unable to keep pace on the scoreboard. Uh, the Penalties will never be forgotten. 12, might as well take that one off. 12 for 79 for Osceola, 13 for 101. I tell you what, there aren't many teams that are going to win a state championship overcoming 13 penalties yeah. for triple-digit yardage, but Harding Academy did just that, and they win the turnover battle as well. Do want to? I think we're being told, yep, we do have the MVP. So let's go down to Eric again. All right, we waited the, the best for last year, young man. You have a game on the football field, both offensive and defensively. Scott, RJ, and I loved watching you play tonight, and you brought it tonight. I, were you just extra motivated because of the state championship game, or did you feel like you had to start getting something done? Because y'all really did kind of start out kind of slow tonight. Yeah, we've had a few slow starts, but we were extra, extra motivated to win this game. <laughs> this is what we worked for all year, and it came together tonight. Or a bigger play for you catching those great touchdown passes from Caden, or how about your pick six? That really got this crowd going. <laughs> Pick six was my favorite. <laughs> okay, uh, you guys, uh, all the trophies you see at Harding Academy, you probably were at these games when you were a little kid. Uh, not pressure, but there's a lot of pride with you guys. How does it feel now that y'all have put a trophy in that case? It feels really good. Every time I come back after I graduate, I'll see that championship, and I'm like, I know that was us. All right, you guys, magical year, undefeated. Um, uh, are you going to the parade? This R.J. Hawk guy up there, he can't get <laughs> off the parade. Are you going to some parade going on? Yeah, I, I'm going to go to a parade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, man, congratulations. You guys uh, you are young. Can you do it again next year? Yes, sir, I believe we can. All right, good luck, man. Congratulations on MVP. RJ, let it go. We get it. There's a parade. <laughs> but uh, that, guys, i got to say, love working with you again. Uh, yeah. These guys from uh, Harding Academy, i got a feeling we'll see them back here again. They're hey. young. They're yeah. talented. And uh, that young man, what a what a great game he had tonight to get MVP, Todd Duggan. Yeah, let, let me say to you too real quick, Eric, great job on the sidelines. You brought some great information all six games. When we didn't know something that was going on in the booth, you were there to find out for us. Even though your measurement skills may not have been that great, you weren't always close on that, but you were really good on the sidelines. I, I ran a 6.840 yesterday. That was yeah, awesome. Come right. on, That man. was. That was. <laughs> you worked a little overtime. Thanks. All right, you guys are the best. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, we'll see you in basketball season. That's coming around the corner as well. You want to say anything else about the parade comment? No, I'm go? done with okay. the parade. It's tomorrow okay. at 6 at the square. Tomorrow. No, it's not. It's Monday. Or Monday. Monday. I, I feel like we. I feel like we've been here so long that, that okay. tomorrow is Monday, but no, tomorrow's Sunday. Oh my goodness! Yes, hey, it, it was a long last yes. game. Let's say that. It but is. it was a great was uh, couple fun. of weekends again. I want to say thanks uh, to you and to Bobby as well for making my job easy, and to Todd Mercer and Lee Francis and McLean Leach who helped us out on spotting and stats. They make my job easy as well, and then all the. Men and women involved in this broadcast, as we say so long and farewell for another set of state championships, I want to say thanks to the AETN sports crew. Without them, this would not be possible. Can't tell you about the feedback we've received over the last couple of weeks. I think we cranked it up a notch this year. It was yeah. good last year. It was great this year. and We can't wait to do it again in the basketball championships in March. For all of these folks, I'm Scott Inman saying so long and good night. Thank you for watching over the last two weekends.